Well, uh, I must say it's been quite some time since I have been live. Uh, when was the last time that I went? It was Mario Day, March 10th. My God. Wow. And it's, and it's October 7th. It's been quite a while. Uh, a lot of life has been lived. Um... You know, life was almost lost <laughs> for me, but you know, how's everyone doing? I have with me uh, Code Zombie Live and Mr. I'm Hello. currently on YouTube. Hello. How was your movie? I know that you went to the movie, Pat. Yeah, it was really good. Um, so it was the 40th anniversary special, one night only. Um, one night only theater viewing of the Evil Dead. Oh, okay. And it's a totally different experience. Mm hmm. Well, yeah, uh, the theater setting obviously makes things, uh, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a theater setting, you know. There's nothing quite like watching a movie in a theater. There's mm -hmm. nothing quite like watching a movie with a crowd, honestly. Hype, yes, yes indeed. We are live now. So, right. because I've seen The Evil Dead more times than I could probably count. Mm -hmm. And it's not really scary anymore to me. Like, it doesn't really... The jumps and the scares don't really get me. And it doesn't feel particularly tense. However, at the end of the movie, when I realized that I had curled the end of... Um, like the the lid or like the the wall of the popcorn bucket, I had like curled it from holding on to it. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, the tension the tension worked perfectly. Nice. See, that's, <laughs> that's always good. That's always uh, it's just it's nice to see a movie in theaters. I am upset that I didn't get to go to uh, different anniversary uh, rescreenings of different movies. Like there was an anniversary mm -hmm. rescreen of Jurassic Park and The Nightmare Before Christmas. And mm -hmm. I didn't get to see those, and I regret it. <laughs> I regret it. Jurassic Park is a, a big one. Yeah, of course. That I regret as well. Because mm -hmm. I've talked to exhausting length about how much I love Jurassic Park. Also, pardon, I'm talking to chicken nuggets currently. That's all right. <laughs> through chicken nuggets. He is channeling speech through the chicken nuggets. Yeah. I'm possessing little the do, nugget. Little we little do we know that chicken nuggets are sacred speech stones. Yeah. <laughs> uh one thing I will say about one of my uh film classes is it was done in a theater setting, like every single lecture mm -hmm. and then we would watch a movie. It was like every single week oh, wow. we watch a movie. That's really cool. Um I got to see Suspiria like that and uh that was a really nice experience. All right, well, since everyone is here um, and things are situated, let's go ahead and begin. What are we doing here tonight? Well, uh, let me go ahead and transition over to my face because I might as well. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm in costume. I'm wearing wizard's robes. <laughs> and I have, uh, I have zhuzhed up my room. It looks really nice. Uh, you know, it looks super nice. Holy shit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, this took a while to set up, and uh, I hope that you can notice that the camera quality has improved because I'm yeah. using my nice DSLR camera as a webcam, and it looks really good. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can see the pumpkins through the tank. I, uh, I specifically set that up because I thought it would be fun. But we are here in just chatting for... A special stream, a stream that I've never done before, a uh, type of stream I've never done before. Has anyone here heard of the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park? Well, clearly uh, the people in voice have, and clearly some people in chat have, because I've talked about it before, especially on the Ghosty Blue's stream over at twitch.tv slash Ghosty Blue. But... The Mystery Flesh Pit National Park is an ARG, an augmented reality game. I don't know why it's considered a game, but essentially it is a fictitious story. Wait, what do you mean? I thought this was a real park. No. <laughs> yes. Because like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the site right now to buy tickets. 
What are you talking oh, about? Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Tell me how the amniotic fluid springs are. Ah, ew. <laughs> so, the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. It's an ARG. It's essentially a fictitious story that is presented as if it happened in real life. Uh, it, essentially, it's like a narrative, not filmic form of like a lost, t uh, like a found footage sort of thing, but not quite. Anyway, I, it'll make sense mm. when I actually get into it. So let's go ahead and go to the main event. So, the way that I've always described ARGs when people ask about them, mm -hmm. you ever play those like detective games at a party? It's like that, but on the internet. I'll drink to that, yeah. Found footage horror is the only horror that fucks me up. For good reason, too. Because mm -hmm. that shit... Yeah. Uh, when it's, it's done well, to get it's to you. done well. When it's done well, it's mm -hmm. done well. No shit, Jacob. When it's done well, it is truly effective. It is an experience not like any other filmic experience. So, the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. If anyone would like to go to the website themselves to read a long, there you go. It is https colon backslash backslash mysteryfleshpit.tumblr.com. All right? The production Crystal level. Crystal chat, the just... production levels. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Uh, I spent a good five hours setting up all these screens because it, it took quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Not to mention they're very inviting to low budget paid filmmakers. Off, bro. Absolutely, uh, they are. It is very inviting to low budget filmmakers because you don't really need much. You just need good execution. Mm hmm. You can get by with competency instead of a budget. Exactly. Yep. And uh, some studios like uh, like uh, Asylum, for example, maybe sometimes perhaps they don't get it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this is the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. It's not really a story per se with like chapters and whatnot. It is a collection of documentation that it presents the world in what's essentially like a non-linear way. You have to piece together what the hell is going on yourself. So uh, let's go all the way to the bottom. But first, there is one document that I would like to start with that I have queued up right now. This is a letter. This is the. This is for all intents and purposes the very, very beginning of the story. So this is to Mr. Colton Fleming, uh, C. O. Jackson Surveying Incorporated, 709 West Indiana Avenue, Midlands, Texas, 79701, May 2nd of 1973. And it reads, Dear Colton, now you know more than most how I may be prone to hyperbole on occasion, but those Whitmer boys that called on Monday are onto something amazing. I mean, really, truly amazing, and amazing it underscored. This isn't any mineral deposit, Colton. At least not like anything I've seen. I went ahead and sent some samples for you and Chris to start looking at. I didn't think you all would believe me if I didn't. This thing that those old boys found is some kind of organic deposit that must go down at least five or six hundred feet by my reckoning. Not a fungus, either. This thing breathes. It makes sounds, same as any other creature, and it bleeds. God, how it bleeds, Colton. It's a mess out here. John and some of the others think it might be something from outer space. Most of the hombres we brought out to start the excavation call it Diablo de Bajo and are real weary about getting too close to it. We figure... Are real weary of going too close to what we figure must be the mouth of this thing, right? Uh, right now, I don't think I care what it is or where it came from. I'm an oil bin. And I think we're on to something real big out here. Once you and Chris start looking at these samples, go ahead and give Lenny a call to send out his crew. And make sure you bring at least four excavators. Pay them whatever they ask to make it fast. Also, there's a card here for a fella in Carlsbad. Uh, Carlsbad? Carlsbad. Uh, with some pretty heavy-duty uh, Spelunky gear. Pay him whatever he wants to get out here by Friday or Saturday. I'll call Beverly to have her put our other jobs on hold for the next three weeks but you should remind her anyway 
we need to move real fast, and that's underscored, real fast on this. Dale Whitmer already left this morning to find someone in Gumption to come take some photos. It'll be a circus once that happened. God help us if the feds come and look it down. There's something about this thing that's important, and I don't want to see something this special get in the hands of some goddamn warden. Regards, James Jackson, Jackson Surveying Incorporated. That's so, a hell of a fucking setup. I know, right? Holy Already, shit. Already, it's just strong. And I specifically wanted to start with this document. This is not the first document presented. This is oh, okay. like two-thirds into this ARG's life. Uh, oh, wow. That, um, All right. This document came forth. But I specifically wanted to start with this one because mm -hmm. it sets the stage for everything that is about to happen. And with that, we can go ahead and start at the very beginning. See, I thought that that was the beginning. I was say establish, establishing literally like that it bleeds and that they call it the devil below. The fucking mm -mm, nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Exactly. <laughs> Pat is a bit too loud, I think. He's overpowering you. Okie dokie. I can turn him down and me up just a little. So is that better? Yes, the blub chorus, of course. Of course. Anyway. We should watch Atrocious if you guys are interested in a really scary found footage film. Absolutely. I'm always interested in a good found footage film. What is Atrocious? I don't know. It sounds atrocious. I mean, I'm in. I'm in. But what is, what is atrocious? <laughs> like, I'm in regardless. What it is doesn't mean I'm. It doesn't change what I'm. Whether or not I'm gonna watch it. Um. Okay. So where do we start? Okay. Uh, I'm just adjusting volumes right quick. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Crystal said. Crystal did say potentially turn me down just a little bit more. All right. How's this? Is this better? Craig said like Perfect. down like fifteen percent was what Perfect. Craig suggested. Okay. Cool. Awesome. A lot of my favorite oh. horror films are B-rated. I can respect that. Same. I mean, I that's literally half of my half of my favorite shit is B movies as well. This <laughs> is like learning the lore of Resident Evil through all the random notes exactly, and yeah, that's why that's... I think this is so effective. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Yeah, that is one hundred percent the vibe that this is going for. <clears throat> Wait! Don't listen to me. I'm, I'm losing your fucking Discord. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> fucking brilliant. Fucking awesome. Amazing. <laughs> okay. Well, Crystal right. was Crystal, listening. Crystal, Crystal was watching so the stream, fine. so she can. She's got uh, audio from that side as well. So we're good. Right. That was the only time in this ARG that I know of that I skipped ahead to a certain document. Because mm -hmm. I, I just I I wanted to set the stage for what exactly this is. So, starting from the very beginning, we have here what looks like a bit of a magazine. High technology deep mm -hmm. in the heart of Texas. Almost half a mile beneath the brutal Texas sun lies one of the newest and most advanced computer systems in the world. Its purpose? To allow engineers and park rangers to reign the ancient and un unconceivably that's that word unconceivably large permian basin super organism after all this is cowboy country oh i have a feeling the theming of this is gonna be fucking beautiful oh absolutely oh let me just go ahead and increase the size of this so i, I love the, it. the so real quick i've 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 dove into a couple of args over the years mm -hmm. um this is one thing that i really really like that they do so the top of this popular science article with that blurry picture where you can't really like you can tell what everything is, but it's slightly blurry and like you can't tell what's on any of the computers. I love that. Yeah, because you can tell that this is a workspace, but like it could just be a workspace, a picture of any workspace ever, mm -hmm. like anywhere. What I it's also fantastic. like is for all intents and purposes, this is like the introduction to the ARG. So mm -hmm. you just see this pink, whatever the heck this is, in the back, yeah. and you can't tell what it is. Of course, no. we have the context now that the ARG is pretty much complete, what yeah, exactly it absolutely. is. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But when you, if you just stumble across this on Tumblr, you're like, what the yeah. fuck? What the hell is that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the fact that it has the Pop Psy logo on it, 
and like the the name recognition of popular science like yeah a you could never make money off of it because holy shit that would be very expensive and kind of illegal but uh uh, that just lends so much like the faux credibility to it i love it it's so good absolutely yeah all right so popular science this is an article from june 1995 Oh, God, hold on. Uh, There is very small text right here that I can't quite make out. A three-dimensional monitor of the lower visitor center is displayed on a full... something... a full-color projector screen. Uh, Displays like this want to help park managers to quickly view system status indicators. God, that was really hard to read. (laughs) The text is also very tiny. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. The room I'm standing in buzzes with activity. Reflections from lights, gauges, and monitors flicker and dance on tall windows, which overlook a large glassed-in atrium. Beyond the glass, a 500-foot tall chasm of muscle and flesh. This is the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park and I'm being given a tour of its control room by one of the park's technicians. While the park is staffed and operated by Park Service employees, this looks more like a NASA operation than what many imagine the work of a park ranger to be. Quote, it's a lot of work to manage a resource as unique as the flesh pit, unquote, says Aaron Welch, the park's director of operations. He should know. Aaron has been with the mystery flesh pit since its days as a roadside tourist oddity in the 70s. Uh, cutting his teeth as a Derrick operator, Aaron says he was drawn to the pit because of the continual challenges it poses to development. Quote, in the early days, we didn't have many kinds of advanced monitoring systems, just size on- seismometers and pressure balloons hooked up to long tubes and barometers. It was real primitive, and you could only know what was going on with the pit locally, kind of like a doctor only being able to listen to a heartbeat not so- and not much else, end quote. And the interior of the park was explored and mapped to... So- and as the interior of the park was explored and mapped, so too did the technology mature. The <laughs> God, if I'm already having trouble reading this early on, God help us all. <laughs> In 1981, a fixed hydraulic-based system was installed which allowed operators to both monitor the pit's overall condition while also influencing the behaviors of specific anatomical elements such as valves and muscles. Quote, we've come a long way, I think, end quote, Aaron Beams. Quote, this new computerized system gives us an unprecedented degree of information and control over the pit's activity, and we're already seeing the results with increased guest safety and satisfaction, end quote. The brand new control room was completed in April of 1994 and is the largest piece of a $500 million renovation to the park's infrastructure and lower visitor center. The darkened glass and concrete layer designed by the acclaimed Santa Fe-based architecture firm of Robertson Associates is the brain of an extensive digital network which spans miles through the pit's anatomy. At the end of the system are more than 800 sensor stations strategically embedded throughout the known portions of the national park. These sensor stations themselves a combination of weather satellite and nerve ganglion, are each outfitted with over a dozen instruments which measure a range of conditions such as humidity, bioseismic vibrations, my god, uh, pH levels, fluid pressures, air quality, and even pheromone concentrations. This raw stream of information from the field stations is continually transmitted via insulated cables to network hubs until it eventually collects within the large computer bank near the back of the control room. Aaron motions to the large blinking machines behind a glass wall. Quote, It's an enormous volume of data to handle, so the supercomputer sorts it out and starts it and turns it into a usable picture for us so we can get an idea of what's going on at any given point given spot end quote one of the 20 or so monitors in the control room displays a colorful chemical analysis readout from the park's amniotic thermal springs which another depicts a slowly rotating 3d view of what looks like airflow through some kind of bronchial junction see already we're having so much information presented yeah, to us. Yeah, there's a ton in, of stuff here. 
and I I don't mean to sound like it's the Dark Souls of X sort of thing, but is it just me or is this information presented at an almost Crichton kind of level? You know, you feel me? Like, uh, it's just what is that? What's Michael the phrase Cri you use? Michael Crichton, Jurassic Park. Oh, how how yes. exhaustively scientific and yeah. verbose his descriptions are. It's this sounds really convincing, doesn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, it's really good. It's presented in in such a great way. I I can't really articulate. Uh, I don't, I'm not smart enough to come up with eloquent words. Um, Pat, I would pull your mic back a smidgen, says your fiance. Ah, uh, I'm crazy. Oh, yeah, I scooted it back a little. Uh, Craig's grabbing some chicky nugs. So that's nice. pH levels. Ah, oh, yes. Got to make sure the flesh pit is safe for swimming. Yes. We noticed that they said amniotic huh. well, fluid thermal springs. We will get, we'll to, get that to that when we get to that. <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> We are interrupted by a small alarm on one of the consoles. A few keystrokes and Aaron apologizes. Oh, hold on. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> a few keystrokes oh, and Aaron apologizes. Sorry about that. Lactic acid buildup in one of the trails. We constructed a new bridge in the trunk that sort of pinches a few muscles, so we had to dump... Oh, God. M uh, medicine name... Medazzle, oh, we had to dump medazolam, that's how you pronounce that, uh, into the tissues once in a while to prevent muscle spasms. This new system works in reverse with targeted chemical injections or precise jolts of electricity acting as a harness for the pit superorganism. What's up? So they're running bridges and things through this thing's muscles? Yes. That's a... We haven't gotten to that description yet, but because because this is yeah. a, a big chunk of flesh and muscle and sinew that convulses yeah. and contracts and expands, they have to keep yeah. this thing open somehow. So, for all intents and purposes, they put stents throughout this entire thing to keep it open. Jeez. We haven't gotten to that detail oh, yet, shit. but I'm just going to yeah. go ahead and tell you that. Oh, Crystal in chat, one one twitch and it's all over. Yes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. we'll get to that when we get to that, huh? We'll get there when we get there. <laughs> it was likely inspired by Jurassic Park. Oh, 100%. Oh, got absolutely. Be. Drop the bedazzled lamb. Oh, the bedazzled lamb. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yes. Bedazzled lamb. Yeah. Bedazzled lamb. I see you. I see you, Craig. Funny boy. The ease by which uh, park managers are able to coax the pit into behaving is one of the key benefits of the new control system. Muscular and gastric actions of the mystery flesh pit limited tour availability and guest safety, and greatly inhibited substantial development of certain organs uh, until the new system was installed. The safety of park visitors has always been our number one priority, explains Aaron. And, like, legitimately, this person knows design. Like they, they, this looks convincingly like it, like it was ripped out of popular science. Mm -hmm. And uh, right here, the like this person is like a damn good artist too because this is a like an original drawing of what like what the field yeah. sensor looks like, just so they could further mm -hmm. sell the believability. Yeah, just to of this. sell the game. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I can uh, read this a little better. Mm, hold on. Let me open image and new tab, and let's see if we can, like, really get in there. Standing at just under three feet tall, field sensor... Something like the unit depicted here are the eyes, ears, and even nose of the park control system. These robust sensors are packed with over... Something, something. Uh, precision instruments designed to measure temperature, humidity, pressure, acidity, bioseismic vibrations, wildlife movement, and even the agitation level of the pit itself. The sensors which keep the field stations... No, 
the anchors, which keep the field stations firmly implanted within the flesh of the pit, serve to serve a dual role as electrodes. New advances in control technology allow muscles of the pit to be stimulated on on stimulated on command with up to 200 or 500,000 volts. Ouch. God, that was oh. so hard to read. Jeez. That you do you see how hard that was to read? Yeah, that was nuts. <laughs> All right. Back to what we were doing. Oh god, there's another one. It's okay. The, yeah. the room with a view is just like a description of the the thing. Yeah. Uh, um. Ice cream sandwich. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, quote: We want people to feel safe and secure when they choose to bring their families down here. Uh, no. <laughs> but we also want them to experience the same sense of excitement and wonder that made the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park famous. The trick is doing it safely. I mean, no one wants to be eaten. We aren't crocodile tours. One of the huge organs beyond the glass slightly tenses. The visitor sensor shifts just a little, seeming to challenge his words. Aaron offers a smug grin to my initial reaction. He laughs a bit and helps me to my feet. There's nothing to worry about. We've got this thing on total lockdown. But for the time being, it seems like we do. Let's just hope it stays that way. And that's the end of the, the fact that it The fact that it moved the whole little facility by shifting a piece of it. That's what we call foreshadowing. Holy hell. So it's going to trash compactor a bunch of people and then people will fuck off and leave it alone. <laughs> well, we'll see. An article from the June right. 1995 issue of Popular Science, which briefly talks about the mid-90s renovations and upgrades to the control systems of the Mystery Flash Pit. For the time, this control facility was state-of-the-art and remained more or less unchanged until the eventual catastrophic system failure, which resulted Ooh. in the closure of the park and a tremendous loss of human life. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, during the events of the 2007 tragedy, the third shift crew bravely stayed within the control room to attempt rescue aid at the cost of their own lives. And there we go. Mm -hmm. That's the end of that piece. Only like 37,000 more pieces to go. It, they Holy brought me all shit. the way to like the middle of the page. All right. So where, which one, where is next? So next, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the the trail engineer dude. Yeah, let's go ahead and look at the trail engineer dude. Did you want so to read it? So it specifically says here it says air is nominally breathable within the pit, but a reserve of oxygen is essential for extent for unexpected drops into noxious gas bladders or carbon dioxide filled lung pockets. So this thing actively breathing. It's actively breathing. Yes, it is. Hmm. Uh, did you want to read the uh, the park trail engineer, or shall I continue? Uh, sure. I mean, I'll I can I can do do some bits and pieces. All right. Um, I guess we'll start at the top, considering I just went to the middle of the page for the fucking air, because that was the part that drew my attention the most. Let's see. So the first thing it points to is the little like gun that they're carrying, which. Mm -hmm. It's, it's calls it a multi-tool, but it straight up just looks like a gun. Uh, let's see. Multi-tool multi -tool contains powerful laser for carving new trails into existing flesh scape. That's fuck. That's fucked. I hate uh, also, that that word is applicable. Flesh scape. Flesh scape. That's gross. Um, and also to act as a deterrent to territorial macrobacteria. Oh, yeah. This thing has an immune system. Well, I mean, yeah, of course, it's breathing and, and clearly alive, so I would assume 100%. Um, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. What the hell? So how did they handle it bleeding when they cut a trail into it? Uh, so it contains a power... Like a motherfucker. So the multi-tool, the purpose of it is... Um, it contains a powerful laser, so it cuts and cauterizes at the oh, same time. That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. They did say uh -huh. it contains a laser. Yeah, it cauterizes at the same time. Uh, adapted farm jacks. 
are used for te used to temporarily temporarily enlarge tight areas long enough for an engineer to deploy stent frames. Yep. So a stent, stent is frames. like um, a stent is when someone has like a cardiomyopathy, you know, like a heart oh, this attack. Oh, this is this thing in the back that keeps it's yes, yeah, the that's stuff that keeps a vein thing. open. Uh, with heart stents, it's like a mesh tube that they put in mm -hmm. and then expands in order to keep the artery open. For all yes. intents and purposes, this is that exact same principle. Yeah, this is this, but without the mesh. Yeah. Because it's just a big opening. Um, impact driver for erecting stent frames. So it's like, it's not that they're... So these things are probably applied pretty violently. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is fucked. <laughs> yes, uh, it is. All right. Compact stent frames are set up by trail engineers as they descend into the undeveloped organs of the pit. Vesicles are later widened by larger crews. Okay, so they cut a trail, not knowing for sure what's even there, and a larger crew will come in and just make it inhabitable, so that yep. people can go and fucking ogle this shit from the inside. Yep, pretty much. Let's see. Robust, overpowered caving radio. What? Hang on. Oh, caving. Okay, caving radio. I see. All right. It serves both practical and psychological purposes. Okay, yeah, so, so they can talk to people so they don't get lost in a fucking mound of flesh. That's the orange wristwatch looking thing. Think of it like a pit bull. Yeah. Makes sense. Pant cuffs and boots are interchangeable due to the frequent effects of gastric enzymes on fabric layers. That's actually a really clever idea. Yeah, this thing the, like, is actually trying the... to digest things. Yeah. Uh -huh. And if they end up in the wrong spot, then it'll try to digest them. Yep. We'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah. Sharp cleats aid in gripping into slick, fleshy walls. Bro, this is fucked. Okay, so Imagine... let me give you an idea of how big this thing is. Because you're mm -hmm. probably wondering, how the hell is it not feeling this? Imagine right now on your face you have a pimple. Yeah. That's the extent of what the people are doing to the pit right now. Oh, shit. Wow, that's that big. fucking big. Holy shit. Hey, I mean, come on, still... Pad. How's it going? Even still... Do you want somebody crawling around your insides with fucking cleats and a gun? Well, no, but that's what I have an immune system for, Wink Wong. No, exactly. Exactly. It's just, it's fucked, man. Like, stomping around inside a living being with, oh, gotta get my spike cleats so I don't slip into the, into the thing's stomach. That's fucked. Um... <laughs> All right, let's see. There's one more. Uh, enzyme secretions increase with trail building activities. Excess liquid will need to be drained via vacuum hoses as scenic trail as a scenic trail is developed further. Okay, so they they're literally just carving. They're, it's literally they're just carving trails for people to look at. Yep. Why not just observe it from the outside? Because it's underground. That's. I mean, they got a whole like observatory in there, don't they? Uh, the observatory can only be so big. Just I guess wait until that's they fair. expand it. Mm. Jesus. This is fucked. This is a living creature. <laughs> yeah. So. This is an entirely fictitious living creature. Absolutely. <clears throat> the interior of the mystery flesh pit is, at many times, an environment completely unsuited to human life. Park Service's trail engineer worked to reinform and develop internal cavities in the pit into safe and pleasant areas for park visitors and their families. Yeah. This service is uh, most often outsourced to one of the park's many corporate partners who supply the highly specialized tools and equipment needed to traverse through the anatomy of the mystery flesh pit. To uh, become yes. a trail engineer requires extensive knowledge of caving, geology, and macrobiology, as well as the as well as well-developed resistance to phagophobia. What is phagophobia? Uh, let me go ahead and get you a definition real quick, because I have no idea. Watch out, phasmophobia. We got phagophobia. Phagophobia is a condition characterized by avoidance of swallowing foods and intense fear of choking while eating solid, solid foods in the absence of... Uh, physiological and anatomical abnormalities. I'm so, can I get that in English? Hang on. Uh, the fear of being swallowed. 
I see. For this intent of purpose, for the intent of purposes of this, the fear of being swallowed. Weird. Hmm. So, in other words, being a normal human being. I mean, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> oh my God, this this profile picture, this profile picture right here. What the hell? What? Oh, it's the, it, the they got their hands together. Well, I just this is a cursed sock puppet, and oh, I thought you were talking <laughs> about the top one. This dude's just praying. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, bit. I have closed the entirety of everything. Look at my SpongeBob wallpaper. One moment. Bam. Uh oh. Mystery flesh pit. National Park. Pop. There we go. Man, I wish this picking a game engine was easier for me. Ah, uh, man, I wish picking a game engine was easier for me. Like, Unreal is nice looking, but if I ever get to a point where the visual scripting isn't enough, I'll have to use C++, which is a complicated language. And then, let's see. I mean, if you're looking at getting as into it as you're implying you are, C++ is a logical next step. That's true. That is true. Eventually, yeah. you are going mm -hmm. to have to learn how to code, B-Boy. Yeah. Especially if you want to make a bitty gum. Yes, very well, much so. Let's look at... Uh, let's look at this utility vehicle. This looks cool. Utility vehicle. Hang on. It's at the very bottom. Park Ranger utility vehicle. They're driving cars in this damn thing. Crystal, why did you put binary into the chat? Alright, hold on. Binary converter to text. Let's see. Bop. Convert. Oh, that's the wrong kind of converter. Okay, convert. What the hell is that? I don't even know what that is. It just came up as an icon. What is this? It turned Dolphin into squeaking. It turned into it? the question mark Unicode block. Crystal, what did you say? What computer hieroglyphic did you just throw at me? <laughs> Shut up! I heard that. <laughs> okay, what what was your question, Pat? What was your question, Pat? I don't know. It, there was a particular picture that I found while I was scrolling down. Oh, okay. All right. We'll, so we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> absolutely. So park ranger, park ranger utility vehicle, mystery flash pit, national park, Texas. All right. Look at this fucking, fucking thing. Look at this <laughs> fucking thing. Rigid structural so... chassis withstands immense crushing force of certain areas within the flesh pit. An overall lozenge form factor <laughs> was necessary to allow the IAV to easily traverse the interior anatomy of the pit. They designed this thing like a pill so it could go easier. What the fuck? Mechanical joints and moving parts are encased in flexible shrouds uh, to prevent buildup of viscera in vital Oops. clearance areas of the vehicle. Oh, I didn't think about that. This thing would still have to scrape its way through so, like, chunks of flesh would get stuck to it. Oh. Ew. The vehicle's power plant, an 8CYL inline diesel engine, drives the IAV via a complex drivetrain linkage, which allows for full rotation at three dimensions. Such flexibility is necessary for navigating the dynamic and challenging internal anatomy of the mystery flesh pit. Dear oh. Lord! 
how quickly did it how quickly did they fucking invent this tony stark level bullshit so they could explore a hole in the ground that bleeds i don't know is there like a copyright year on this i don't know i uh, will get to holy that Cat, there's even an interior diagram. I see that. Why red. is it all in red? Why? Why is it all in red? Don't, don't oh. do your internal. No, there's a reason for it, I guess. Red lighting within cavern preserves night vision of occupants. I see. Okay. I, I was going to say, if you're doing mechanical drawings and it's like that kind of stuff don't light your shit in your mechanical drawings in red because it makes you it looks like it's a super villain <laughs> it's not. evil it looks evil as fuck it does look <laughs> evil as fuck the, 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 the shape of this car why is there a ladder on it so that people can uh climb over it i thought they were worried about it getting crushed people are climbing it and it's getting well crushed. i mean it has to withstand getting crushed if it's on the off chance that it's not getting crushed though people can I guess go that's out fair, and yeah. that's a good point be a part of the flesh pit yeah oh, gross Ew. sensor canisters Why? house house a suite of x-ray lidar and radar <laughs> instruments for navigation and there's also a heavy duty utility of wrench a <laughs> winch not wrench winch one of the earliest challenges of the development of the mystery flesh pit was the simple logistics of transporting personnel and equipment within the pit. While early crews had limited success crawling through the pit with canvas bags, it was oh apparent that a more, God. it was apparent that a more reliable solution was needed. Oh, oh my by God, the way, the whole eight, Jerry, did you get his canvas bag? No. <laughs> So I should I should tell you one detail of the mystery flesh pit. It mm -hmm. is a consistent 101 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's a consistent 100 percent humidity. Ew, it's balmy as fuck. It's balmy. <laughs> it's fleshy it's and gross. balmy and squelching, and it's got giant crabs <sighs> walking around. We haven't gotten to that yet. What? We haven't. We haven't gotten to that yet. We'll get there when we get there. That's tonight's catchphrase. Apparently, we'll get there when we get there. Tad, are we at the mystery flesh pit yet? We'll get there when we get there. Bro, the I don't know. If, is, yeah. I don't know if you could pay me to visit this shit. This sounds gross. No, I would totally visit this. This is so fucked. It's eldritch as hell. Oh, Just don't shit. tell me to visit it's it in so 2007. Gross, though. Because if it's 2007, I'm out. Oh, I see the headline there. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. The Groom and Internal Anatomy Vehicle, or IAV, uh, was designed from the ground up with the complex terrain of the flesh pit in mind. These two-man, low-profile crawling machines were the workhorses of early construction projects within the mystery flesh pit. So that would have to be, like, 80s, then. This would have to be an 80s thing. Yeah, because uh, they mentioned they mentioned in the in the the first thing that there was like it was around as like a roadside attraction. Yeah. Fuck. In the seventies, a high torque diesel engine combined with a strong articulating chassis allowed the IAV to reliably traverse even the slickest and steepest of routes. A streamlined lozenge profile prevented loose tissues from catching or latching onto the vehicle as it traversed the many hundreds of miles of viscera within the pit. By the time that the, na the mystery flesh pit was absorbed into the National wait, Park Wait, wait, I'm service, sorry, say that again? They said absorbed. By the time that the mystery flesh pit was absorbed into the National Park <laughs> Service. Oh. God damn it. Many of the remaining IAV fleet were used by Park Service as Ranger Field vehicles. As Ranger vehicles, many IAVs were used in a variety of mission profiles ranging from law enforcement, wildlife mitigation, as well as search and rescue operations. Very few of these vehicles survived or were rediscovered following the, two th following the 2007 disaster, which closed the mystery flesh pit. The remaining examples, which do still exist, command astronomically high auction prices and are a much sought after addiction to exotic car collections. Mystery flesh pit, everyone.
So let's look at winter activities, huh? Winter activities in the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. This is a fucking brochure. There's nothing much to this as it's just an image. But look at this. Mm -hmm. This is a brochure of things to do in the Mystery Flesh Pit during the winter. Mm. Yeah, uh, fa families would come to the Mystery Flesh Pit and they would have fun. Oh, here's a fun one. Uh, this is a diagram of the Mystery Flesh Pit from the New Jackson Survey from Gumption, Texas in 1974. At this point, this is what they had discovered. So let's go ahead and take a quick old gander at this, shall we? So right at the very top at zero feet, we have the top, the surface level visitor center, right? And right here in this Sarlacc pit, there is the pit entry orifice. And this line is the estimated upper extent of the organism. So as you can see, compared to the visitor center and this, mm -hmm. it's pretty damn big. Yeah. Traveling down its actual gullet, we then reach the upper moisture crop. Yeah. And continuing down this, uh, what we would assume to be the esophagus, yeah. although it branches out a lot, so I would assume this is uh, excavation. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, no, we reach the hard palate right here. That's interesting. So the palate is essentially like um, the opening of the esophagus. Mm -hmm. uh, so the palate is like right here at your throat. Think of it like your vocal cords. In fact, the, your, yeah. the palate is your vocal cords. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Then you reach the lower moisture crop with the lower visitor center construction site right there at the very bottom. By the way, we are 2,000 feet down at this point. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> yep. Shit. So there is, there is a, 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 a an elevator that takes you all the way down the mystery flesh pit, and it is a 20-minute ride. Wow. All right, so... Let me go ahead and catch up on chat real quick. Uh, I'm thinking maybe to just go with Unity since it's the most popular meeting and has the most resources and assets available for it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I, would, su I would suggest also giving it a week and uh, trying from there. <laughs> well, I think I've heard Mystery Flesh Pit enough times to last my entire life. I'm going to go to bed. Have a good night. Mr. Top Hat. Uh, yeah, we have a long way to go because this is a rabbit hole. This is I a should hell not have a rabbit said, hole, apparently. I should not have said rabbit hole. So yeah, the Lower Visitor Center constru oh. Construction Center. So traveling along here, you then reach the Sand Cullet, or Gullet, Sand Gullet. So I'm assuming this is where um, sediment builds up. So that's gross. Mm. Mm, over beautiful. here we have oysters shame whatever the fuck that is traveling over here we have the trunk organ and then traveling upwards we have the amniotic ballast bulbs aka pleasure domes excuse me we'll get to that when we get to that oh god <laughs> so going back over to uh, the lower visitor center construction era area we then travel further down, and we reach the mucus crypts. Hold on a second, real quick. Yeah. Real quick, I'm jumping ahead just a tad. Fondue Village. <laughs> yeah, Fondue, Fondue Village. Village. Fondue uh, Village. Oh, just wait until you get to God's Mistake. <laughs> what? What is God's mistake? So traveling traveling away from Fondue Village, we have a bone. Then we have Thor's rib cage. So this is an actual rib cage. It's a giant fucking rib cage. What? Then we reach the Septum Falls, and then down there we have God's mistake. <laughs> God's mistake. What is this? <laughs> it's the mystery flesh pit, my friend. Bro, it's just this is just one particular mouth of the planet. That's just what this is. Yeah, it's just the planet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the entire planet's a living We've organism. Found, Mother yeah, of God, we found the world's butthole. Just quit, <laughs> quit poking it. <laughs> 
So we have the northern surveying extent and then the surveying depth extent. And also the uh, the chyme or chime bladder. Anyway, point is, just around like 4,000 feet, or uh, like just below 4,000 feet. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me see. Around 4,250 feet. Sorry, it's like I had to do a little quick maths. Uh, we only explored this tiny extent of the mystery flesh pit. This thing extends for hundreds of miles. So, again, remember how I said how it's like a pimple? Mm hmm We've only basically explored like a pimple of whatever the hell this thing is. So. So, yeah, it's the whole planet. Yep. This yeah, profile. This is just, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe. <laughs> Crystal, I'm glad you got a kick out of the world's butthole. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> of course, Texas would be it. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yep, Texas is the world's butthole. There it is. Wait a minute. <laughs> I know that the Earth is round, but like, look at the look at this flat plane. The Earth has Hank Hill ass. <laughs> yes. Oh wait uh, a minute! This, hang on. This can't hmm. be. This can't be the world's butthole. Why not? It's got. It has a palate literally right below it. Oh yeah, this is the mouth. <laughs> Which it's means the it's buttholes the on the other the side of the earth. Yeah, the mouth of the world. That actually sounds a lot more badass. Yeah, it does. The maw, the maw of the, the maw of the planet. The maw of the planet, dude. This is just a big ass sarlacc pit. It's just yeah. It's it's just it's the planet's maw. Yep. That's oh, it's, that's still gross. It's gross. Yeah. This profile <laughs> survey is one of the many examples produced early in the development of the mystery flesh pit. The New Jackson Survey, conducted by surveyor James Slippin' Jim Jackson. <laughs> what a name! James what? Slippin' Jim Jackson. Uh, combined many okay. prior smaller surveys with new bot. Oh, Jesus Christ. Biospeleological. New... Bio Holy shit, what a word. Whatever the fuck that means. I need to look up whatever the hell that means. One second, lads. Biospele Biospeleological, also known as cave biology. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, spelunking. That's, yeah. Biospeleological, because the spell was spelunking. Yeah, it's a, it's a branch of biology dedicated to the study of organisms that live in caves and are collectively referred to as... Troglofauna. Fascinating. Wait, Bios is that what is that what troglodyte means? Is cave like a cave person? Uh, it usually means uh, underdeveloped of some kind or primitive. Interesting. Okay. Yep. Okay. There you go. I was just. I wonder if that's where the prefix of that came from. Maybe I don't know. Uh, biospeleological data obtained by Jackson's team. Notably, Jackson's surveying expedition marked the discovery of such features as the Fondue Village and the Kaimi or Chime Bladder and the Pleasure Domes. Missing from this early survey are the deeper portions of pit anatomy, such as the Gift Gardens and Copepod Barrows. Gift okay. Gardens? The gift Gardens and Copepod Barrows. Uh, as these sections what? would remain inaccessible until the introduction of the Grumman IAV in 1978. They made that shit in 78! That, that fucking, the lozenge car? <laughs> that was 78. <laughs> the lozenge car, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this survey was printed in several national publications and was a primary piece of marketing information until an updated computer-aided survey was conducted in 1980. Wow. Mystery flesh pit, everyone. There's there's so much. There's so much, yet it's such a small slice of what this creature is. Aberrant alarm! Yo, I want to read this one real quick. Go this, ahead. This is another one that really caught my eye. All right, so this is it's a, little, a little sign. It yeah. says, aberrant alarm. If this emergency light is blinking, cryptic phenomena have re been reported in this area. Never enter a worksite with high occult activity. 
I'm sorry, excuse me? What the fuck now kind of eldritch bullshit is coming out of you? Now you understand my costume. Why a cult activity? There is a cult excuse activity. Me? There's a cult activity in the flesh pit. Fucking. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I love what? it. I love it so much. Welcome to the mystery flesh pit. Alright, look at this one. Roadless Rally 88. 4x4 four four off road uh -huh. jamboree through the mystery flesh pit. Uh -huh. They oh, fucking God. had Dude. hillbilly ass car races in the flesh pit. <laughs> it is Texas. So, it but is look Texas. Look at this art. This thing is ripping <sighs> ass through Fantastic. the flesh. It's tearing <laughs> it apart. It's literally tearing ass. Um. <laughs> What the fuck? Oh my god, yeah. There's a cult activity in the fucking flesh pit, man. And they're driving fucking... Fucking off-road fucking Baha-ass cars through there. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! You're just going... Okay. And on your left, you if you look to your left... You'll see the weekly gathering of the cult that worships the entity <laughs> contained yeah. deep within the flesh pit. And to your right, you'll see Jim Bob and his three-time award-winning... Fuck, I can't think of a dumb name for a dumb car. His oh, three-time award-winning championship, insert clever car name here, practicing in the mystery pit in preparation to defend his championship for the fourth time. <laughs> Holy shit, that was pretty good. <laughs> Happening right beside each other. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> they fucking drove cars down here. They had to transport Holy the cars shit. down here into the flesh pit. <sighs> they had to transfer the cars they had, down they here had to the, the flesh They had to move the cars pit. down there. What? Also, in these the things ass. are emitting exhaust. How the fuck are people not getting carbon monoxide poisoning? <laughs> they are, they just aren't reporting it. Oh my god. That is that is my guess. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. The fucking jamboree. Yep. Alright, and then there's also this. There's... Uh, did this open? Yeah, I did. Caver Coop's Spooky Halloween Carnival at the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. There are haunted hay rides, pumpkin patch campfire stories, decorated trails. Okay, I assume this is not inside of the flesh pit. This is like at the maw of the flesh pit. Yes. No! 1992! This would be in the flesh pit! Never mind! Ah! Ah! This would be in it! Decorated trails! Decorated trails! This is in the flesh pit. They had oh a Halloween ass party in the flesh pit. Fucking spooky pit. Scary petting zoo. We will get to that when we get to that. What the fuck are you petting in the flesh pit? We will get to that when we get to that. <laughs> and there's a signed liability waiver required for it. And there's a safe trick-or-treating, blood, but they didn't have to make it. Uh, corn maze, drink specials at Chili's 2 and Trader Vic's. Chili's 2? Yeah, they didn't. They couldn't call it Chili's, so it's Chili's uh -oh, 2. Oh, Chili's 2. And uh, Trader Joe's, Trader Vic's. Uh -huh. Yeah, Trader Vic's, I see, yeah. October 31st, 1992, admission. $5 for children, 12 and under, and $8 for uh, Happy Halloween from the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. Oh, oh no. Oh, okay, this is about to get fucked. Like, even more fucked than um, everything oh? has been. This okay. is this story right here, the circus clown Kymus, is so fucked. Okay. Do we want to do one more silly thing before we veer straight into fucked? Uh, sure. Let's see. All right. Um, I gotta find it again. Give me one second. Did I? Did I accidentally this open this thing? Here we go. Oh. Oh, okay. Never mind. This is fucked too. Never mind. We can do yours first. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot found, of things that are just fucked. Yeah, I found the little the little badge that's the flesh pit workers prayer. 
I thought it was going to be something kind of silly, but it's a bit fucked. It's kind of dark. No. So, yeah, we'll start with yours. So <laughs> this is a geobiological feature inside of the mystery flesh pit. Mm -hmm. Then it's no laughing matter. Though it may look oh. like a colorful ice cream birthday cake covered in a glazed frosting, this calcified formation is anything but festive. In 1976, a group of performers accidentally fell into the upper maw of the entry orifice. While the soft flesh of the pit throat somewhat cushioned the performers' falls, the unexpected dilation of an epiglottal fold allowed them to slide down into a then unreinforced area of the pit. Rescue personnel were able to locate the performers inside a digestive sack a few hours later, but by that time, all 50 stunts people had already begun being digested by the pit. Rescue personnel cut them out, correctly guessing that many were still alive. An experiment antacid spray was discharged on top of the gooey shrieking mound, but it was too late. Instead of reducing the acidic effects of the partially digested bodies of the performers, the experimental compound flesh ca flash calcified into the multicolored formation that you see in front of you. Though hauntingly beautiful, the circus clown Chymus, as a somber reminder of why it is always important to observe all safety instructions and to always stay on marked trails when visiting the interior of the mystery flesh pit. Or, you know, don't poke the... Don't so, poke the fucking... Tremor so, uh, worm buried in the ground with a stick. So this thing, uh, this formation, it, uh, it's the, uh, the the calcified corpses of 50 people who fell into the pit and slid down into a digestive sack. And it's a geobiological feature. You can, uh, like, uh, uh, when, the, uh, when the park, like, officially opened and the hiking trails happened, you could go to the circus clown Chymus and look at it and take pictures of it. Like, pose next to it with your kids. Next to the ah, corpses. pose next to the pile next, of corpses. Next to the corpses of 50 Hooray. people who died in 1976. Fun for the whole family. All right, moving on. A family picture. It's a family picture. I have to... Oh, no. Did this all, like, rearrange? I think this... No, no, it didn't. Okay. I don't think it did. did it, it did slightly, but it's it's whatever. I don't know. Anyway, um... Let me just go ahead and... Open a couple of these. Whilst you get your bearings, since I have this one up already, there is a small little tag that it looks like they would probably have on, like, keys... Or um, like a little yeah. tag that would hang from a uniform. I have it pulled says, up. Go ahead. Okay, it's a flesh pit worker's prayer. Each day I descend into the deep, cutting meat to earn my keep. I pray to my Father in heaven above that I return to those I love. If somehow death and I should meet, as even the flesh pit needs to eat, I want my loved ones to be sure that in Jesus' arms I am secure. That yeah. is way darker than I expected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's way more than I expected uh, I thought it was going to be kind of jokey and like fun no it's dark no no, it's dark as fuck <laughs> it's dark holy hell and then uh, we have this notice sign here uh, that is like partially digested prolonged skin contact with nervous tissue may result in an increased color perception range this effect is temporary and often dissipates in 8 to 10 hours. So if you come into contact with the nervous tissue of this creature, it does things to you. Yeah, but... And apparently it gives you increased color perception. So what, is that what, ex even mean? what does that mean? It could be like a drug of some kind. I don't uh, quite know. There's probably something naturally occurring in the body that just kind of just enhances your your perception. It gets you a little bit high. Yep. All right. So then there was someone that asked the question, and uh, the AR, this ARG responded. 
The artist of this ARG, rather, responded. So, I noticed that on the wildlife brochure that there's a logo marked Joint Disaster Reclamation Venture. What was the disaster of the brochure is before the closing incident? And it shows the uh, picture of this. And uh, this is an important time to talk about uh, these certain uh, entities that work over the mystery flesh pit. So, there's the U.S. Department of the Interior... This is a, a, a sect of, um, th this is a sect that essentially works on the development of the interior workings, uh, like the visitor center and whatnot of the park. Uh, I don't know what exactly this is. I think that's just a, uh, like a deal agreement. And then here is this, Anodyne Deep Earth Mining. So Anodyne is a company name that you were going to hear a lot of in the Mystery Flesh Pit ARG. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the corporation that uh, basically oversees all development, and uh, they're they're basically the corporate side of things. They're marketing. They are safety development and research. Um, scientific funding of outside parties etc cetera, etc cetera. oh so okay. anodyne is a thing that comes up a lot so because the mystery flesh pit was a discovery unprecedented to modern science the department of the interior along with the epa initially classified it as an ecological disaster Anodyne Deep Earth Mining oh. Incorporated had been awarded the primary operational contract for the earliest surveys and expeditions into the pit with a unique agreement that they would be granted an exclusive mining lease for resource extraction. And the interest what the fuck of kind of resources are you pulling out of a fleshy tube? We will get to that when we oh, get to shit. that. <laughs> With the interest of transparency and government, the partnership was made public knowledge with the development activities being referred to as reclamation. This terminology stuck around even in the decades following the discovery, long after the immense value of the mystery flesh pit was realized. Ironically, this terminology was finally accurate only after the 2007 incident. Anodyne Incorporated continues to jointly operate the Permian Basin Superorganism Containment and Ecological Exclusion Zone, but was taken a number but has taken a number of steps to distance its brand from the role it played in the tragedy. So, yeah. Let's just keep that in mind. Permian Basin Superorganism Containment and ecological exclusion zone. Alright, moving swiftly so shit, along. So shit went downhill very quickly at one point, clearly. Yep. So, uh, right here, we have some of the uh, the Photoshop skills of this artist right now. I, I, keep, I hate to keep, like, breaking the immersion, but I have to point out just, like, the sheer skill that all of this took... Like, look at yeah. this. This is a bronchial junction access way uh, inside of the mystery flesh pit, and it just shows just how gross it is. Because even though you keep hearing mystery flesh pit, mystery flesh pit, the entire thing is made out of flesh, sometimes, like, unless you see it, you can't exactly, like, grasp that idea. Because it just doesn't make yeah. any sense. How could there be, like, a pit of flesh that's, like, living and you could walk through it? So it really helped to have visual aids, and yeah, there you go. And then this right here is a Japanese, uh, I want to say, visitor manual or advertisement the of the Japanese or bit. Korean. You know what? This is Korean. Excuse me. This is Korean. Or I don't know what I actually. You know, I don't know what language this is. I don't know. Point is, it is foreign. And look at it. Actually, this kind of looks like a journal of some kind. Or maybe it is like a brochure. <laughs> Shut up, Crystal. <laughs> so, during the head... <laughs> I'm sorry, she went silent. I feel bad now. I'm sorry, Crystal. Laugh again, please. <laughs> point, is, point is, this is foreign, and look at it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> shut up. 
Shut up again. <laughs> During the heyday of the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park, many attempts were made to entice foreign tourists to visit the park. Many of these earlier marketing campaigns... Okay, so this is a this is a uh, marketing campaign. Most yeah. of these early marketing Makes campaigns sense. were met with middling effectiveness, while later branding strategies focused on the natural health benefits of the amniotic spring baths. Remember how I said the pleasure domes? Oh... Yeah. Amniotic spring baths. Amniotic mm. spring baths. Mm. Moving on. I uh, yielded far greater success. Yeah. This uh, South Korean, there we go. This South Korean language advertisement is an example of an earlier campaign, which, like its original American counterpart, focused on the thrilling and adventurous aspects of the unique park. Many thanks to members of the MFP Discord, invite link, who provided the translation of this poster. Thanks, Ranty. Oh, okay. So this person had someone, like, you know, do language things. I love this. This has been a lovely story time thus far. I take it back. Amniotic spring baths. Amniotic spring baths. I agree. It's gross, yeah. isn't it? So you know what that implies, though? What? That it can... It can uh, reproduce. If it's living, it reproduces. Hell, viruses. If it's dead, it reproduces. Well, yes, <laughs> but still, the 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 fact that there's huge uh, amniotic sacs, it yeah. clearly can reproduce. Yep. So, Q and A. One. We'll Q &A get to that later. Zero Thank zero you, one. Crystal. Yep, we'll get to that later. <laughs> so, Q and A zero zero one. How deep is the pit? The depth recorded for a human was achieved in 1979 by an expedition team which was able to reach an unprecedented depth of 19,102 meters below the entry orifice, surpassing the previously held 1976 Ow. record of 12,117 meters. At depths below 19,000 meters, the anatomy of the pit begins to noticeably change and become much less anatomically similar to the other surface forms of life. Explorations beyond these depths are extremely challenging due to the exotic and largely unknown nature of the pit's lower anatomy. Unmanned expendable probe vehicles have been able to surpass the 19,000 meter depth, but poor communications quality over, uh, over anything but tether cables have, been fur have made further exploration cost prohibitive. It is hypothesized that the pit may well extend it to the Earth's mantle, which many scientists suggest that the organism may be native to the interior of the planet, having merely, quote-unquote, surfaced to the upper tectonic plates for unknown reasons. Hi! This is honestly one of my favorite projects I've encountered in a long time. I genuinely love it to pieces. I have got to ask, though, what exactly are anodyne mining down there? Among the resources harvested from within the Mystery Flesh Pit, by far the most ubiquitous and well-known to the public was amniotic ballast. The miraculously oh, yeah. silky fluid was extracted from deep within the pit and was refined on-site before being transferred to off-site facilities for additional processing. From there, many different products were manufactured by Anodyne that each exploited the fantastic properties of the ballast. One of the more notable and best-selling of these were the Vita Salve line of consumer-grade OTC supplements. And here's an advertisement. You deserve to feel better than good. So, this is a cognitive enhancement Aww. gel. This is lubrication for him and for her. This is a de-aging peptide. And I don't know what the fuck this is. Oh, this is an oncological salve. <laughs> oh my god. Crystal, imagine you go to the store to get some sort of like beauty product or some form of like toothpaste or some shit. And it's it made from, from amniotic ballast of some mysterious creature you don't even have the capacity to fully grasp. 
Like I'm looking at pictures that's and I've, like, I've like researched this ARG and I still don't fully grasp this fucking that's thing. That's like when they, uh, in Futurama, they had that soda that was made out of like from the excretions from like a space worm alien thing. But it tasted really fucking good. We will get to that when we uh, get to that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get some water. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, I'll wait. I'll wait. So... Criddle, what do you think so far of this amazing ARG? <laughs> I gotta switch over to just the face for now. Because oh, holy hell, <laughs> this is something else. The weirdest thing I've ever been sold is product made with stem cells. What product was that? Were you trying to regrow a spinal column or something? Oh, also, I want to point out that I have, like, this really cool, like, light over there. And it makes the mushroom, like, do this, like, weird glowing green thing. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Also, look at this thing that I found. I found, like, a giant red crystal-looking thing. <laughs> anyway. It's cool. What's cool? I don't know. It's cool, as in you don't want to tell me what that product was? Put a light under it? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, ah! Whoa. <laughs> there you go. There's some nice light for you, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't exactly do the thing that I think you want it to do very well. It's still cool, though. Let me just uh, close that real quick. I'm Googling the product. You go ahead and do that. <laughs> All right, you know what? Pat's taking too long, and I am impatient. Let's go back to the main event, shall we? Shiakazing! All right. Refined amniotic ballast was concentrated and combined with other materials sourced from the pit to cure a range of ailments, ranging from general general malaise? Malaise. Malaise? I don't know how that's pronounced. General malaise, mental degradation due to aging, to growth of several carcinogenic tumors... Uh, then consumed recreationally. Oh, wait. When consumed recreationally. God, I'm having trouble reading. When consumed recreationally, refined amniotic ballast fluid created a very strong and pleasant psychotropic effect. Altogether different from alcohol, cannabis, opioids, or hallucinogens. Through non -ha Though non-habit forming... The direct and plentiful benefits of products such as VitaSalve saw a year-over-year -year continual market growth from the time it was initially offered until the supply was effectively shut down following the 2007 closure of the pit. Beyond Which means it was habit-forming. <laughs> yes, it was habit-forming. You scared me. Oh, my God. It was fruit stem cells in a product from a brand called Juice Beauty. I want to derive my beauty from juice. Let me adjust my microphone. Yeah. To mm -hmm. rav my beauty from juice. Beyond ballast-based products, several other materials were mined for the pit by anodyne. Bone structures were mined to cut down sl and cut down to slabs, which found prominent use in the construction industry, as well as insulating lightweight yet incredibly strong building and finishing material. So moving swiftly along, found this today, and man, this brings back memories. Did the Burger King ever open up in the visitor center? I vaguely remember hearing about a special king's crown you can nab there. <laughs> the renovated it's lower... Great. Huh? I love when people lean into stuff like that. Oh, of course, it's great. That's, that's my favorite part of an ARG is when people lean into it. The renovated lower visitor center opens... Uh, in 1995. Hey, that's my birth year. 
Uh, with the addition of an expanded and fully enclosed main concourse for commercial vendors. On opening day, the lower visitor center contained only three food vendors, a small convenience style store, a full service trader Vix, and an airport style Burger King. <laughs> Plans for a rainforest cafe never advanced beyond initial talks with the park service. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. <laughs> there was a Burger King down in the pit. How long could someone live in the flesh pit long term? Archaeological evidence of prehistoric human activity within the pit has led to conjecture among scientists that long term habitation within the anatomy of the pit is possible but unlikely. Without modern technology and tools, any humans living long term within the entrails of the superorganism would need to adapt into the perpetual dark adapt, sorry to the perpetual darkness, subpar oxygen, constant high humidity, heat, and continually changing fleshscape in order to survive. Over hundreds of generations, which combined with the poorly understood long-term effects of consuming amniotic ballast, ballast fluid, it is entirely possible that humans adapted to this lifestyle would be fundamentally different from modern humans. You having fun yet, lads? Ladies and gentle ladies, everyone? You having fun? Yes. Because uh, we still have way more mystery flesh pit to go through. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, this is actually pretty fucking interesting. Yeah, it Whoever is, isn't it? Whoever constructed and wrote this is fucking clever as shit. By the way, we still have quite a ways of this to go. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually I may start skipping through things because we're already at 12:30 a.m. Uh Pat, oh, wow. do you have a specific time that you need to like leave? Um I'm I can probably do like another I don't know another like hour or two. Okay, cool. Without too much too much of an issue. By the way, this uh, this ambience that I have playing is not at all mm. befitting of the mystery flesh, but I gotta say, I have swamp sounds at night, cr frogs, crickets, light rain, forest nature sounds three hours going on. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the correct ambience, but anyway, moving swiftly along, we have the Permian Basin Recovery and Superorganism Containment Corporation. Absolutely no visitors without prior authorization from site director. So we have general anesthetic, a, uh, general anesthetic production and service administration facility, and this is ten years later after the. I uh, see. After two thousand seven. They have it sedated constantly. Interesting to think about, isn't it? Mm. So we have the vehicle damage incident report form V two C for the Grumman IAV. So this is like an actual, like if, if something went wrong, it, like you mm. were operating this thing and something went wrong, you would have yeah. this form to fill out. And let's look at the condition of the vehicle stuff. We have indicate damage to the vehicle on the diagram below. Use the following legend. So we have bent, melted, graffiti, crushed, dented, occult graffiti. marking... Uh, occult marking, stained, pitted, rusted, infestation, scratched, missing, dissolved, and Tom. What the fuck is Tom? <laughs> you know, Tom. Is that Tom or Torn? Uh, it I feel might like be. That's it's torn. torn. It's Torn. I wish it was Tom. <laughs> <laughs> like there's there's a guy named Tom. Yeah, that Tom always lives in fucks the pit. up everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how did this thing break? Tom. Ah. So then you have to describe how the incident Gross. occurred. And yeah. And for damage caused by park specific wildlife, please specify which species, if known. <laughs> oh my what? god, what the well, fuck? Oh, wait. Sp uh, species, if known. <sighs> There's a lot to this. Now we're going to go on to something absolutely revolting. Welcome to the Amniotic Thermal Springs. So, so gross. Bath hours from Sunday to Thursday. This is the Thursday, worst part. 
bathhouse, uh, the bath hours from Sunday to Thursday mm. are 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Friday to Saturday is 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. And then it's closed during federal holidays. The prices for locker rounds will have five dollars USD for two hours. Bottled water is twelve dollars seventy five cents USD. Jesus. Just drink the just drink the goo. Just drink the goo. <laughs> for sixteen ounces. That's the real horror right there. Thirteen dollars for a bottle of water. Hand towels are twenty two dollars. When available. So relaxation rejuvenation located deep in the warmer crypts oh don't call it crypts Ew. located deep in the warmer crypts of the mystery flesh pit national park the amniotic thermal springs are renowned worldwide for their delightful effects on mind body and spirit first discovered during the early exploration of the mystery flesh pit in the 1970s the amniotic thermal baths were one of the earliest draws to the park Many people traveled across the country to seek out the mystic properties of the healing baths, which were rumored to heal ailments and cure diseases. Many others, calling them pleasure domes, enjoyed the aphrodisiacal the aphrodisiacal uh, effects of the amniotic fluids. Today, nope. this tradition continues to modern bathers who use the springs medicinally nope. or recreationally. <laughs> so, nope. in other words. People would get, in other words, excited down in the amniotic springs, and they may get into a little bit of uh, festivities and in in an inspired uh, wrestling discussion. match, <laughs> an inspired discussion amongst the amniotic fluid. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, look at this. Uh, oh, I don't know why I pointed out my screen. There's a mouse cursor. Look at this. This is a stent with an elevator that leads all the way to... Oh, my God. What have I done? <gasps> I opened it up. Oh, my God. Uh. I have discovered a thing. Okay, cool. And this lift goes all the way down. Holy shit. Look at this. This is the main bath. It's got like a little island with like little chairs and shit. It's got a ring light so people can see. Oh, and there it is. There's the libido bath for lovers. The squeeze. libido bath. Lovers squeeze. That's a okay. So here's the thing. It is gross. However, calling the calling the very tight tunnel into the fuck pit the lovers squeeze. That's that's good theming. That's on point. That's good. Yeah. The lovers squeeze. That's a good name. It's also, gross. I don't ever want to say the word fuck pit ever again. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's move on. <laughs> During an emergency, the bathhouse facility is designed to act as a reinforced shelter. So yeah, if, if shit goes sideways, they go inside of the bathhouse and hopefully they don't die. So Enjoying the springs. Access to the amniotic thermal springs are included with your entry pass to the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. I feel like I've said that way too many times tonight. Moving yes. on. Though visitors should be aware that lockers, towel rentals, and private bath reservations are all available for additional fees. In order to safely enjoy the baths, there are a few rules and regulations uh, that we ask you to observe in order to protect and preserve this natural resource for future visitors. Please stow all personal belongings to the provided lockers within the bathhouse. Please enjoy the full contact benefits of the amniotic thermal springs by not wearing or bringing any outside fabric materials into the baths. Come in naked, in other words. Yo. The fluid ballast of the mystery flesh pit is a delicate anatomical system, uh, which can become easily agitated by synthetic clothing dyes and plastics. Oh, okay. So, in other words, you have to become naked or else the pit gets displeased. It upsets its tummy. Yeah. Note. Oh, we haven't gotten to the gastric sea yet. 
No, surgical grade hand towels are no. available to rent from the bathhouse on a first come, first serve basis. Please see the counter attendant for more information. Please utilize the provided showers before and after enjoying the baths. Doing so prevents contamination of the baths and trail infrastructure within the mystery flesh pit. Please do not disturb any structural, electrical, or mechanical infrastructure in or around the baths. Bathers under the age of 18 are welcome with an adult guardian to the main bath. Visitors of, to all other baths must be 18 years or older. Please do not claim or reserve lounge chairs. If you encounter any wildlife within the springs, please alert a park ranger or use one of the emergency blue telephones located throughout the springs. Please do not approach or antagonize any park wildlife. You know, that sounds completely normal until you give the context that we're inside of a pit of flesh. Yeah. So. I'm going to have weird fucking <laughs> flesh pit nightmares tonight. <laughs> Please remain quiet, courteous, and respectful to fellow bathers by limiting displays of affection while within the main bath. No. For what? special information regarding the libido bath, please on, see the man. contact and consent pamphlet available at the bathhouse lobby or at one of the information kiosks right. within the lower visitor center. I'm going to need clarification on something because one of these I, things is not like the others is. Yeah, one of these things is marketed as a fuck pit that you have to go <laughs> through lover's squeeze to get through. If I gotta fucking get through lover's squeeze to yeah. get to the fucking weird bang chamber, why do I gotta sign up? Okay, so here's the thing. So if we go back to this diagram, there is the main bath right here, and there's springs potencies. So... Up in oh. the upper areas, there is the main bath, which has the least amount of potency. It's like yes. a swimming pool that's a little tingly. Then yeah. there's the Regia bath, which is a little more potent than the latest bath, mm -hmm. then the Gratia bath. Below this line, visitors are encouraged to consult a physician before entering b baths below. I see. I there's see. the okay. Placido bath, the Salus bath, the Cupido bath, and then below that, is visitors are encouraged to consult a religious, mystic, or sexual wellness co counselor before entering I, baths below the yellow line. Those would be the what? Viribus bath, and then the most potent is the, li the libido bath. I mean, I know I've heard, I've heard sex referred to as heels to Jesus, but that's not what they mean, guys. Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse yeah. me? Have you never heard that? I've never once in my yeah, life heard it, that phrase. Um, some of the older relatives in my family from Texas ah, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard them refer to it as <laughs> I've heard them refer to it as uh, going heels to Jesus. Because your I, heels are up. Oh no! I've never yeah. heard of that before. Yeah, heels to Jesus. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. No. It was actually oh in, my god! Um, that means you're raising your souls land. up. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so um, this is dirty. That, I don't like this anymore. Th that phrase is actually used in Zombieland as well. Uh, Tales to Jesus. It. I've never yeah. once in my life heard that phrase. It's it's in Zombieland. Tallahassee says it. Oh my god! All right, so easy swimming with an apostrophe. Well, the no. fact remains that the Mystery Flesh Pit is an ancient and enormous superorganism of indeterminate origin. Visitors can rest easy knowing that every effort has been made to make the Amniotic Thermal Springs a safe and secure natural experience. Would you go to the Amniotic Thermal Spring? No. No? No. No. Not, e not even to the Libido Pit? No. Or apparently you touch the the fluid and you just yeah, immediately turn yes. primal? You immediately yes, you touch the you touch the the liquid and you're immediately overcome with the fuck. No. <laughs> uh, no. All right, the mechanical structures. You touch the you touch the fluid and you just you hear the pit. I no longer wish to be horny. I wish to be happy. <laughs> oh the my whole pit is just sad. A, a, a face grows in the wall of the pit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, that would be awful. Oh. The mechanical structures you see pressed into the fleshy walls of the baths are called geodesic retaining frames. 
are geodesic retaining frames. These are an integral integral part of how park engineers create the spacious and accessible thermal baths. Networks of reinforced trails, so basically super stent. I see. Okay. Networks of reinforced trails, such as those found in other areas of the park, provide well-lit and even walking surfaces. Uh, in the unlikely event that one of these structures becomes compromised, visitors are instructed to immediately use one of the nearby blue emergency phones to alert park staff. I feel like compromised is a very gentle term here for fucking collapsing. <laughs> yeah. Amniotic spring fluid. Though it is commonly called amniotic fluid, the semi-opaque, slippery, luminescent... Luminescent? A uh, luminescent liquid uh, produced within the these organic thermal springs uh, has little in common with the fluid produced by pregnant mammals. Park geobiologists use the term ballast as it is theorized that the fluid is produced by the mystery flesh pit as a way to regulate the endocrine systems of the superorganism. Since its discovery, amniotic spring fluid has been a highly sought-after resource and is tightly regulated by the National Park Service. The unique chemical properties of the liquid have been okay. shown in clinical studies to mildly reverse cell degradation due to factors such as cancer or aging. Uh, many park visitors report additional benefits of bathing, such as decreased joint pain, healthier skin, weight loss, and vision improvement. Okay, so this is not, in fact, Baby Flesh Pit's first bath water. No. <laughs> it's just... This is just... <laughs> Um, I'm sorry. So the, it, so we don't know for sure if it increases or oh, increases. By increases, the way, Crystal, uh, I have I have read your chat messages and what the fuck I gotta say. Anyway, uh, a second noise is no. <laughs> Does that kind of ambience exist? I don't want to put on that ambience. No, That'd don't, even don't even, gross. don't. Mm, I like nope, my, just, I like my pleasant yeah. swamp noises. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel mm -hmm. like I'm at a witch's hut on the mm -hmm. internet. <laughs> I agree. A secondary agree. and infamous property of amniotic spring fluid are the psychoactive and aphrodisiacal effects it has on those consume, on those who consume or topically apply it. Bathers describe a gentle euphoric sensation when soaking in higher potency springs, with the effects of concentrated exposure being well documented by several best selling short films. What? Many of which are available for purchase by request in the Upper Visitor Center gift shop. You can buy porn. Uh, beyond the physical sensations, visitors often claim that they develop deep emotional bonds with those they interact with while inside the thermal springs. Amniotic spring fluid is safe to eat and drink. It has been... Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is where things get oh, fucked up. No. No. Amniotic spring fluid is safe to eat <sighs> and drink and has been enjoyed and has enjoyed limited explo exposure as an additive to a variety of popular consumer foodstuffs, such as the... Feel-good McFlurry. Such as the seasonal available Coca-Cola heartthrob, trademark, and feel-good McFlurry registered. Yeah, I and saw even that a ballast feel-good McFlurry. <laughs> McDonald's! And even a ballast-based you know, cordial liquor. Bro. Yeah? McDonald's with their feel-good McFlurry. Fucking get your fucking horny ice cream out of here, McDonald's. The horny ice cream, <laughs> dude. Oh my god. Oh my god. This fucking face. Every time I see it, it's gonna <laughs> fuck me up. <laughs> that's the face of the flesh pit. Oh no, it's a sock that's puppet. How, yeah, that's how it speaks to you. From the deeps of the pit, you hear gurgle. Mmm, Kermit, you frog here. Oh, I would hate that. Oh no. <laughs> you're the you're the only one in the park at the end of the night you're closing up all the guests have left you're in your big like fucking bulky suit shit with your gun and you just hear from the pit hey how y'all doing <laughs> all the way deep down you, it, you it's, like Bailey's it's pretty nice in here isn't it <laughs> drink Jacob Bailey's over here. 
Jacob over here like, but does it exist? Yes. <laughs> does it exist? I don't know. This scan of a 2006 pamphlet offers information about the amniotic thermal springs known by many as the Pleasure Domes within the now closed Mystery Flashpaint National Park. The thermal baths were one of the highlights of the park, drawing in tens of thousands of visitors each year, particularly during the cold winter months. It was only after the park permanently closed in 2007 that the long-term effects of exposure to the amniotic spring fluid or ballast became apparent. Many of those who routinely what? soaked in the baths underwent depressive withdrawal periods as the Whoa. price of extracted ballast fluids increased the tread since the tragedy has skyrocketed. Oh my god. Today, only those willing to spend thousands of dollars on purchasing the illicit substance can experience this enchanting elixir. Wow. You go into withdrawals. Jesus. Friendly faces. Uh, meet the fine folks who work hard to make sure your visit to the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park is safe, healthy, educational, and most of all, fun. We have the park ranger, interpretive ranger, guide ranger, medic ranger, technician, trail engineer, surveyor, laborer, the miner, ranger? scientist, and explorer. And you, the explorer! Oh, they have a little mirror. That's cute. Oh, yeah, and the occult, of course. This info kiosk was originally in the exhibit section of the Lower Visitor Center and was one of many displays intended to educate guests about specific as aspects of the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. In this case, the variety of personnel types that might be encountered during a visit. God damn, I'm having so much difficulty reading. <sighs> the color palette is reflective of the mid-90s renovations to the Lower Visitor Center, which aim to create a much more clean, professional, and family-friendly presentation to the entire experience. At its peak, between 200 and 500 public and private personnel would have been active within the park at any given time, with additional hundreds outside of the park acting as support roles. Oh god, what the fuck? Surgical excavation crew field recording. There's audio? Oh, huh. play that shit. Let's do this. Oh, that sound is sickening. Oh. What the fuck? I don't like this. Why is it fucking howling? Well, I mean, it's just stuff digging into its flesh, I guess. There's your ambient flesh pit sounds. Yep, there it is. We found it, ladies and gentle ladies. Lentils and gentle beans, we've discovered the grossest sound. Oh, there's like music and shit echoing too. <laughs> it sounds like an excavator being it, birthed. It does. It does. I hated it. I, I, I say I hate it. I loved every second of that, but I hated every second that was, of that. That was strange. Notice respiratory mucosal folds are unmarked. Oh, what a sentence. Exercise caution to avoid entrapment. Oh, that's right. Bruh. I forgot about this. So, uh, yeah, um, so if you walk into, like, the lungs of this thing, yeah, uh, it's ever-changing. So it's like a labyrinth that always changes. You could get trapped um. inside of it. 
No, thank you. Oh my god. What the hell is this? All right. Uh, interventarial camping equipment user guide. Oh God, I forgot you could go <laughs> camping inside the flesh pit. Ugh. So please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the many features and capabilities of this interventarial and camp camping equipment list. Your life may depend on it. Uh, let me increase the size of this son of a bitch so I can read this. All right. It's a Ventario camping, camping or backcountry camping within the Mystery Flesh Pit National Parks. Many reinforced natural trails offers unparalleled challenges and opportunities to the serious hiker and outdoorsman. <sighs> Leaving behind the illuminated and ventilated infrastructure of the main park area requires more than exceptional physical endurance and psychological fortitude. The, envi the environment of the pit necessitates the use of machinery specifically designed to help you get out of most of your hiking, get the most out of your hiking adventure. The yellow bag in your kit contains an interventarial tent. Unlike other tents, this tent has been designed specifically to accommodate two hikers within the inner anatomy of the mystery flesh pit. Oh my god. The sturdy frame, once assembled, will protect you from the potentially crushing action of peristaltic peristaltic muscle action while you are asleep, while the special fabric of the tent prevents the pit from leaching moisture from your body. Um, excuse me? The orange bag in your kit provides your support pack, an all-in-one unit designed to provide you with electrical power, illumination, a propane stove, and conditioned air. Also contained in the orange bag are the necessary hoses to connect your support pack to your interventarial tent. Look at this shit. It's a pack that you have to wear on your back. It has an ignition cord, fuel cap, propane flow control, AC duct connector. Yeah, air conditioning. That's right. Air conditioning inside of the flesh pit. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's like 100 degrees in there, you said. Yep. Control with 100% humidity. Control panel. Cooking light, fold out propane stove, mixed ratio adjustment lever. Imagine you're down in the flesh pit and you decide, you know what I want tonight, honey? Some fucking chicken <laughs> chicken fajitas. Better yet, just lop off a little bit of the wall and let's cook that up and eat it. Some pit fajitas. <laughs> Pit beef. Oh no! <laughs> ah, pit beef. Pit beef. Mm. Oh, that—that's a terrible pun. I hate that I just made that pun. Oh my mm. god! I think you'll find is pit beef, sir. <laughs> Oh my god. Additional tips: coin-operated hiking trail kiosks are located at five mile intervals. Five mile, five mile intervals along natural trails. These illuminated stations each provide a clean water nozzle, a gasoline nozzle, desiccant filters, exhaust filters, snack and cigarette fending, and an emergency what? telephone line to the lower visitor cigarette. center. Sometimes you gotta have a good cigarette down in the pit. I, I guess. Gotta have, some... You gotta have a smoke after cooking your fucking pit meat. <laughs> Please do not dispose of used filters or trash at these stations or along trail routes. Used filters may be recycled at the lower visitor center. Remember to stay full. How do they stop people from littering inside the flesh pit? Uh, they feed you the pit if you litter. True. You become pit beef. <laughs> yeah. No, you would become an amalgamate. We'll get to that when we get to that. Remember to stay fully hydrated. At this the just high, keeps getting worse. As a high temperature, high humidity environment can quickly lead to dehydration when combined with strenuous physical activity. By the way, hail hydrate. I my voice is starting to hurt, but I must carry on. Do not approach any wildlife you encounter while hiking. Observe from a distance, but do not attempt to disturb any interpit wildlife or life forms, rather. Exercise an attitude of respect and courtesy for fellow hikers you may encounter. For many, the act of hiking a multi-day natural trail 
is a deeply personal and intimate journey made by people of many different lifestyles and backgrounds. However, if another party invites you to join them for a meal or a psychosexual ritual, consider it. Consider it! Memories made on the trails are often memories that last a lifetime. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, moving on swiftly. Natural trails within the mystery flesh pit exist in complete damp darkness. Please ensure that your personal, your personal and camp lights are operational before setting out. When finished, please return your interventarial camping equipment kit to the hiking equipment checkout counter on level four of the lower visitor center. So then we get a, a really nicely done diagram of this tent. It's a it's a cylinder. 12 mm -hmm. foot by 7 foot. Now, do you have to carve your own... Uh, do you have to carve your own little piece of the, fla the, the pit so you can put your tent there? <laughs> oh, dude, it's like a ball. It, it's, it's like a dice. Look at it. That's so cool. Huh. That's actually really cool. Yeah, if the if the that flesh pit closes around clever. you, this is to uh, stop it from crushing you, or absorbing you. We'll get to that oh. when we get to that. Become one with the pit. Become pit beef. <laughs> <laughs> Of the many activities available to visitors uh, to the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park, perhaps the most difficult and challenging were the many natural trails and hiking routes. These natural trails, unlike the reinforced and put on a hat. Oh, yeah, he, he redeemed the guide my quest thing. Uh, give me one second. Put on a hat. My god, attaching cobwebs to this thing was a fucking mistake. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, there you go. There we go. I'm wearing a hat now. Here's a hat. I am now wearing a hat. I'll wear this for about like five minutes and then I'm going to stop. Okay. Of the many activities available to visitors to the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park, perhaps the most difficult and challenging were the many natural trails and hiking routes. These natural trails, unlike the reinforced and enclosed tour trails familiar to most park visitors, were uh, they were well respected and infamous among hiking enthusiasts for the intense uh, endurance required to successfully hike a full route. Uh, climbing, caving, diving, orienteering were all skills demanded by the trail hike. Through the Though the introduction of the interventarial camping equipment kit made the logistics a manageable prospect for park guests. For a $130 deposit, pairs of visitors could rent a kit from the park's lower visitor center for up to two weeks at a time. While revolutionary for the time and essentially for any serious attempt at camping within the entrails of the Mystery Flesh Pit, many have complained that the noise and weight of the support packs as well as the claustrophobia of the tent design. Uh, today, surviving units in operating condition are, off, are often used by Antarctic research personnel on extended expedition uh, where vehicular shelters are not viable. So yeah, there you go. Also, I want to point out oh. this profile picture down here. It's an is I don't know I don't know what the context of this is, but it's like some anime girl with like a gun. I don't know. I find that kind of funny. <laughs> Excuse Press you, down. Crystal, dear lord. Yeah. Oh, is that all the tabs I opened? That one's all the tabs I opened. Well, fiddle dee dee. Let's move on, shall we? Well, 
let me just open all the things. My God, we have so many of these to go through. All right, so this looks like it's 1-800-MEAT-LAW for a free consultation. What is this? Hold on. Have you or a loved one been injured after contact with the mystery flesh pit? Call the home office of Homer Lutfier, the butcher, an experienced attorney who will fight for your piece of meat. Spiritual trauma, wildlife injury, OSHA violations, wrongful digestion, sexual and or industrial negligence. 1-800-MEAT-LAW. What the fuck? Bro, yeah, 1-800-MEAT-LAW. This hotel door hanger is a surviving example of many of the types of advertisements visitors might receive when staying on property at the Mystery Flesh Pit. Though it was understood that guests were taking a substantial risk by venturing into the maw of the Flesh Pit, litigation concerning injuries and wrongdoing within the park was a lucrative, if somewhat niche, legal specialization. Following the 2007 closure, of course, the number of out-of-court settlements and class action suits would skyrocket. All right, this hat is making these headphones really hard to uh, wear, so I'm going to put this back. But, Craig, I hope I successfully uh, pleased you by wearing that hat. I would have worn another hat, but uh, uh, they're all the way... I don't know where. Anyway. All right. Unearthing the unholy. Exploring the tragedy of the mystery flesh pit. Accidental discovery. The mystery flesh pit and the unique phenomena surrounding it were targets of a head-first and furiously paced campaign of commercial exploitation. Uh, once architects, engineers, geobiologists, and clerical members of the development team had done their work to make the park safe and viable, marketing teams faced the daunting task of selling the public on the intriguing and miraculous phenomena of the mystery flesh pit while downplaying the visceral cosmic horror of the pit itself. Families were a particularly difficult sell, as children were often displaying an over often displayed an overwhelming fear and aversion to descending into the throat of the pit. One strategy early in the park's this history... This is correct. Yeah, this is correct. This is the correct reaction. Trust your kids. Listen to them every once in a while. One strategy early in the park's history was the creation of friendly cartoon mascot Caver Coop. Ah, oh, that's the Caver Coop guy that we saw in the Halloween thing. Uh, a brief animated film starring Caver Coop was shown at the park's visitor center where the character would attempt to assuage worries about being eaten alive or swallowed, reassuring children and often parents that the pit was perfectly safe and reinforced. When the attraction was absorbed into the National Park System in the early 1980s, uh. signage and other geographic materials were updated to the NPS graphic identity. The architecture of the park's surface facilities was also expanded and renovated during this time to better fit with the nat natural resort image of the Mystery Flesh Pit brand, uh, drawing inspiration for the local Santa Fe style integrated uh, with the unique bone formations within the interior of the pit, compounding this design choice. Gross. Oh, and here's a, here's a picture of the upper visitor center outside of the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. That is that is shockingly well done. Yeah. Huh. Look at that. Ah, uh, here we are. No mountain too high, no tunnel too low. Anodyne, a global leader in industry equipment, geosurveying, construction. La 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 la. You get the idea. Anodyne was originally founded by the Anchor Mineral Company in 1923. And 19 you know what? My voice is getting tired. Pat, do you think you want to read some one of these? Hmm? Sure. All right, go ahead. Which one is this? Hang on, let me catch up to you. Uh, it's the one that's the black poster of Anodyne. I see. Here we go. Right. Anodyne was originally founded as the Anchor Mineral Corporation in 1923. In 1958, Anchor Mineral Co. merged with Dynamic Equipment <coughs> LLC to form a new company known as Anodyne Deep Earth Mining. Later switched, uh, later changed to Anodyne. Headquartered in Arlington, Texas, and prior to its 2008 restructuring, Anodyne Corporation was the 23rd largest American company by revenue. Globally, Anodyne developed 20, over 28 
Fuck. Globally, Anodyne employed over 28,000 people. It operated seven major research, development, and production facilities around the world, six of which were in the United States. Let's see. The company was instrumental in the containment efforts following the 2007 disaster, but was ultimately unable to avoid a full investigation by the Commission of Geobiological Resources and Public Safety. Let's see, which uncovered an alarming number of safety violations and poor management practices. In the months after the disaster, the company filed for bankruptcy with it, with its assets either sold or incorporated into the restructured Permian Permian? Yeah, Permian Basin Recovery and Superorganism Containment Corporation. Fuck, that's a mouthful. Yep. Under it really heavy is. regulatory oversight. The primary function of the PBRSCC, even the abbreviation is fucking laborious, is to monitor <laughs> the Permian base and superorganism and to proceed and to produce and administer the industrial sedatives necessary to prevent the organism from entering an active state. The PBRSCC also oversees damage payouts to the victims of the 2007 tragedy. So they're busy now. It's fucking busy as shit. Paying everybody yeah. off. Tell them the fuck off. I'll give you 500 bucks to fuck off. <laughs> that they are. <laughs> right, oh, see. God. What the hell happened? Oh, that was all the stuff that I had opened. Uh, let's see. I got to find where I am on the page. Mystery Flesh Pit Gift Shop. Oh, let me uh, take this off screen because I don't know what exactly this is. Okay. Wait a minute. Give me one second. Hey, Crystal. Would you mind turning the air up? It's kind of hot in here. Oh, my God. Huh? There's an actual gift shop mm. that if you want, like, mystery flesh pit merchandise... You can actually get it. Oh, wow. Like, this is real. This is actually a real shop. It's That's registered on Austin. Honey, too. What the hell? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is actually a thing. Here, let me go ahead and put this in the... Let me put this in the chat. Holy shit. <laughs> Fucking mystery... Mystery flesh pit. Dude. Can you imagine walking around with that and people have no fucking clue what it is? Oh my god, it would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me find out where we're at. Let's see. Um. Oh, here's the, here's here's the first one. Here's the beginning of the, the beginning of the end. Oh, wait, this is what? live from CNN in Gumption, Texas. Breaking news, disaster at Living National Park. Restraints fail as massive underground creature swallows hundreds of park goers. Yeah, look at that. It's just uh, the splotch of red is gross. Wow. Yes. Okay, here's another one. And then there, there's two. Looks like one is a sanctify. It looks like a magazine cover. Yeah. Right, let's see. Magazine of the Southern Baptist Association. Yep. Baptist Convention denounces exploration of Mystery Pit, a foul tunnel to Lucifer himself. Continued on page 21. Nice. Buried by the Almighty, enjoyed by the damned. See, could the Texas superorganism be the beast of revelations? Biblical histori historians weigh in. Continued on page 48. Also in this issue, Socialist Origins of National Park Service, top rabbi products made from the mystery pits, resources are not kosher, abominations from the deep, and then <laughs> hoax debunked, <laughs> it's just bad writing. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> that hurt a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it hurt a little bit to pronounce. Yes, yeah, it did. <laughs> All right, and then we have this really cool, like, super well put together poster. Um, take it from me, bud. You can keep a good man down with the right benefits and incentives. 
Are you tired of the humdrum of traditional forester work? Do your daily duties feel routine? Is your life lacking a sense of thrilling adventure? Well, why not consider dying? Why not consider a tour of the <laughs> Mystery <laughs> Flesh Pit Park Ranger Program? The Permian Basin Super Organism National Natural Preserve is always taking applications and offers a tremendous benefit package, including PTO, full medical, plus dental, plus psychiatric, plus vision, vision insurance, life insurance, early retirement eligibility in case you get eaten, as well as ample opportunities for ex expedient advancement into a hole in the ground. Tackle the most challenging and rewarding assignment in the history of Park Service by talking with your supervisor about a transfer to the mystery flesh pit today. Holy shit. <laughs> well, I mean, do you wanna? No. <laughs> I would prefer to die in my bed at like 80 something, 90 something, preferably. Oh, wait. Hold on. I thought you were reading this thing right here. Which one? I was, yeah. Oh, uh, wait, no, uh, hang on. on the Christian oh, one. I didn't even notice that was there. Hang on, let me go back. That's all I right. You don't one. have to read it. We don't, we're, we, there's just really so much. I mean, I'm going to read it. I want to read it for myself. Uh, real quick, give me one second. Um, I mean, it should be relatively quick. It is well known that there was a swell of protest from evangelical Christian groups during the early heydays of the Mystery Flesh Pit. Thanks in part to associations with the ongoing satanic panic, there were accusations of demon activity originating from the pit itself. With numerous cries of moral corruption stemming from the many less than penitent, penitent activities which took place within the park. As the war on drugs in the aforementioned satanic panic, the AIDS epidemic, and other topics came to the forefront of evangelical Christian concerns during the 1980s, the mystery flesh pit panic faded into obscurity. Let's see. The inclusion of a dedicated, if albeit non denominational, chapel in the 1990s revelation. Renovation of the lower visitor center seems to be the watershed moment at which the God fearing and now anodyne stock owning vocal leadership of many of these organizations accepted the mystery flesh pit as nothing more than a noteworthy oddity on Texas maps. So they paid off the church. Aye. Wow. Oops. I That's closed fucked. my ambience. Ah. That's fucked. Okay. All right, what's next? Uh, Dallas Morning News, a mystery pit and the man who found it. Oh, this is James Slippin' Jim Jackson. Dude, look at him. Hang on one moment. Opening up a few things. Holy shit. Oh. Huh. Holy hell, this article is dense. All right, yeah, let's see. Let's, let's skip over this um, because there's really a lot. Yeah. But there's this on uh, Slippin' Jim. Ah, uh, here we go. This is one that I wanted to uh, do. This is the Lower Visitor Center. The mm. Gateway into the Deep. Your adventure into the wonder and magnificence of the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park begins at your uh, enclosed gondola. In blah, 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 begins as your enclosed gondola begins the descent down to the darkness away from the blistering heat and light of the Permian Basin. Just when the 20-minute twisting and turning ride down to the maw of this immense organism feels like it might never end, Illu an illuminated structure comes into view beneath your feet. Step out of the elevator car and into the well-lit and comfortable lobby of the Lower Visitor Center, your gateway to an unforgettable visit with one of the world's most unique natural wonders. Architectural Gem The Mystery Flesh Pit National Park's Lower Visitor Center is a marvel of structural engineering that took workers over eight years to construct. The original concrete visitor center was forcefully installed down the surface entry orifice in the 1970s, but in the late 80s, Work began to expand the capabilities of the facility by surrounding the original concrete core with a superstructure composed of acid-resistant glass and surgical-grade structural steel. This new facility would act as a central hub uh, for all activities within the vast anatom 
a fast anatomy of the mystery flesh pit, allowing park administration to quickly and efficiently dispatch rangers and manage operations. Today, the lower visitor center serves a key role in guest satisfaction, as well as with the comfortable and secure architecture of the building, bringing even the most fearful guests back again and again. Look at this fucking thing. Dang. Look at this thing. Yeah, that's super impressive. It is impressive, but also, what the fuck? There are 14 levels to this thing. Hot damn. Explore Inner Space Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. Exit 176 towards Gumption. Hey, there's a garage sale. <laughs> Discover Verdant Forest, Majestic Scenery, and Cosmic Terror. Do you really want to market cosmic terror? Legendary oh, wait a minute. trout fishing. <laughs> Legendary trout fishing, yeah. Oh wait, this is that same advertisement that was the, the South Korean one, but it's in English. Broken philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Geotectonic yeah. carnal moans. Dude, this is not selling <laughs> for me. The low, for the low, low price of three thousand dollars a day you too can hear a hole in the ground moan <laughs> spelunker led descend descent uh campfire programs abyssal copepod mystery flesh pit national park god damn ah uh. <sighs> holy crap <sighs> oh my god Purple Sage Motel in Gumption, Texas. Uh, August 24th of 1973. Dear Colton, things are really starting to take off down here. At around 3 or so last night, we broke a new depth record of 1,800 feet vertical descent from the Maw. Is this handwritten? Huh. Kudos for the effort. Uh, it's a damn shame you and the other folks are so spooked by this pit. To be down here in it really is something else now don't misunderstand i'm not saying it's easy god almighty is it tough getting around uh here in its gullet and such a man's gotta have an iron constitution or a mighty thick skull and lucky me the good lord has seen it to bless me with both some of those boys here have rigged uh some of the boys here have rigged up scuba gear and we've been able to squeeze around down here with some effort Giant muscles, giant bones, entered so big you could drive a trailer truck through. Strange critters scuttling around the dark down here, too. Big bugs and germs and worms and other queer things that you wouldn't believe. Some kind of crab thing the size of a coyote crept out, of, out a week and a half ago. We caught it crawling around the feed trailer. Alright, so now we're starting to get into the creatures that live in this Holy pit. Holy crap. I got a good look at it before one of Dale's boys shot at it and it skittered away. We had a funeral for the third uh, roustabout to pass away this month last Tuesday. The papers are already talking gossip like uh, more than I like and I'm hopeful that Bill and the other boy, the, the other attorneys, God this is hard to read, can keep the vultures and feds at bay. People don't understand that they've... La la la. Until they've seen it and been down inside it, Colton. We're pioneers and explorers here. This is good work. This is God's work. Nobody knows what the mystery pit is or what it eats or how long it's been here. We need some guys with real smarts to come. Uh, with real smarts, not oil men. Doctors, scientists, good, decent folks who would have nothing to do with this. Uh, I'm mighty... Uh, glad that you've taken responsibility for holding down the fort back home while I'm out here playing the cowboy. You're a good man, Colton. The kind of quality individual they don't make anymore. Maybe I'm hoping I can find some of that goodness in myself someday. Maybe down at the belly of this beast. Give Samantha and the baby my regards, Jim Jackson. P.S. Oh, this is Jim. This is uh, Slippin' Jim. P.S. There's a company... Uh, out of Fort Worth that I've called up to help with the exploration. I attach their card uh, to this letter. Give the, uh, the, uh, the, the give the geologist a call and let them know the details. I'm told they're very good at what they do. Oh, and look who it is. 
It's anodyne. anodyne. Of course it is. August 24th, 1973. Yep, it's anodyne. Holy shit. Oh, Lord. Okay. Ah, uh, here we go. Here we go. Um, is that... What? What? What's up? The creatures. Yeah. That so, is a shrimp with hands. Yes, it is. That so, is a shrimp with hands. My phone died. What did I miss? Uh, nothing much, uh, but... You're about to see some major parasitic fauna of the Permian Basin superorganism. So take a look at some of this shit. We have a gastric bristle worm, abyssal copepod, gangliotoad, amorphous shame. Like, look at this shit. Like, this stuff lives down here in the flesh pit. This is some gross-ass creatures. Yeah. However... Shrieking cloistropod. A, Ugh. That is a... There, above that is a ballast siren. Yeah. So... Does that mean it lives in the springs? It seems that way. It must live in the springs, and uh, it must, like, latch on and, like... Uh eat this chart like many uh, and many others like it were produced by the park services as an educational tool for use in classrooms museums and universities popular among natural history enthusiasts the illustrations featured on the poster were the result of intensive expeditions and surveys into the mystery flesh pit while visitors are most certain to encounter common fauna such as the myriad of macrobacteria subspecies Many organisms, such as the venomous shamble and abyssal copepod, tend to evade trails and high-traffic areas, making them difficult to spot. As a practical tool, these illustrations were useful in training wildlife management rangers in proper firearm techniques for, safety, for safely dispatching a dangerous organism. For this reason, the designers of this and other charts attempted to represent the scale of the organisms in relation to each other as accurately as possible. So yeah, if you're a park ranger and one of these things like gets on the trail, you gotta you gotta get that gun out. Ah, uh, I don't want to read this. Uh, the incident report is a thing that we will get to. That's the last thing we're gonna read. Okay. Ah, here we are. Is it true that the restaurants of the lower visitor center served meat carved from the living flesh of the pit itself and cooked in its juices, or was that a marketing gimmick? So, <laughs> while there are hundreds of urban legends circulating around about the park serving flesh from either the superorganism or any of the myriad of wildlife within, these rumors are completely untrue. No restaurant within the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park ever served these items for two main reasons. One, Pit flesh, as well as flesh from virtually every species found within the park, was and is notorious for its very tough and oily texture, and it's quite unpleasant. Even when cooked with a generous amount of seasoning, the mineral-like flavor of the flesh pit meat was a very tough sell to even the most adventurous foodies. And two, after 1980, international unauthorized damage to either the unauthorized damage... Uh, to either the superorganism or wildlife within the superorganism is oh, superorganism. God, uh, constituted felony trespass and destruction of government property. No vendor granted an operating license within the park would dream of invoking such a severe sanction for such a relatively worthless prize. So yeah, they do not serve the meat. They do not serve pit beef. I sure, I sure hope so. <laughs> I sure hope not. Also, um, I know I said I'd be down for another like hour or two, but it is unfortunately very swiftly creeping up on me. Um, oh, okay. We will uh, cover a couple things, and I'm I have to work tomorrow, so I need to end this soon too. Yeah. All right. So let's let's go to this right here. You said that some people were recovered from compound surface fauna. How many were successfully removed? Mm -hmm. Are they still alive today? 
So you probably see this diagram right here. Oh, that's so gross. There are different parts of the uh, the mystery flesh pit. I would just talk about this because there is an article, but I don't know where it is in here. Uh, that talks about mm -hmm. how some of the walls are lined with cilia, just like how in our intestines we have cilia that wriggle around and gather nutrients. Yeah, uh, the cilia can grab things, and that could be yeah, that's their whole their whole deal. That could be a uh, fauna that falls in the surface or other things like that, um, or people. Uh, it had, so what happens is um, they get grabbed and they get dragged to the walls. And then there is a process called amalgamation that happens in which all of these organisms are digested and fused together into one mass of flesh that is still living and waiting to be digested. And as you can see from this diagram, patient A, patient B, patient C, people sometimes are victims. And oh, so, so they can get amalgamated. And so there are people that could be coyotes and squirrels and wolves and other sort of such fauna like that that are all amalgamated together. And that's one of the horrors that can happen. So while, uh, while HIPAA and similar regulations prevent me from finding out exactly how many people have suffered amalgamation, it's estimated that fewer than a half dozen ever survive the treatment process to recovery quote-unquote recovery, though, as a loaded word here. The treatment, co-developed by Baylor Medical Center and the Anodide Corporation, was highly dependent on the nature of amalgamation, and seems to have been most successful with combined masses containing only human tissue. The procedure for treatment involved removing the brain and as much of the spinal cord as possible from the amalgamation. When possible... Oh. Extraction of other organs, such as eyes, cochlear tissues, tongues, and larynx, were later enabled the recovered patient, quote-unquote recovered patient, a sensory experience much closer to that which they had previously enjoyed. Since medical technology is even still unable to replicate the organic sensory quality of human sensory tissue, however, the difficulty and cost of this additional procedure all but ensured that this rarely took place. Once extracted, the brain of the individual oh. patient would be placed in a nutrient salve and connected to a proprietary interface and life support system developed by the anodyne company. A rudimentary computer-based system could be used to communicate with a recovered patient after several months of therapy, and in some cases, individuals were reportedly able to use vocoders to synthesize speech. It is unknown how many, if any, of these individuals are still alive today. Oh my god, what wow. the hell is that? A gasp owl. What? A gasp owl or suckling sprites, a buggins, are all names given to the same pe peculiar type of animal found in deeper portions of the Mystery Flesh Pit's anatomy. They are elusive and are one of the least studied fauna within the park, with very few living examples surviving in captivity long enough to study. They are believed to be descended from the a an avian ancestor, though this is speculation at best. The name Gasp Owl is a reference to the characteristic labored breathing which plagues these small and curious creatures. Good lord! What the fuck? Look at that thing. Oh, that's, that's gross. Many tourists and park staff would erroneously report having spotted the fabled marrow folk, when in reality, they had stumbled upon a small brood of frightened gas bowels. A group of them is called a swamp root? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the okay. idea of the gas bowel is kind of cool. The art needs a little work, but... I it's, have no idea cool what idea. this is. I have and no idea what this is. Oh, I don't know. And it's not even that like the art needs work. I just think it could be. I just think it would probably would be more clear what it is in color. A bright light in a dark place. Meet AT&T AT and T's newest and most reliable public call box. It's designed and installed within the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. 
Famous for its harsh operating conditions for even the most robust industrial equipment. A video display gives callers step-by-step -step operating instructions in up to four languages and a supply of clean drinking water and complimentary propane fuel refreshes and invigorates even the most weary park visitor. Oh, and its built-in halogen lamp offers reassurance and the, the form of long-life illumination even in the darkest and dampest environments. So, yeah. Uh... Oh, here we are. Often called lighthouses by seasoned hikers and park field staff, the emergency trail phones located along most developed trails within the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park were the result of one of the most ambitious subterranean telecommunications products of the late 20th century. So essentially, like radio doesn't work down there all that well. So they have all of these like blue phones dotted around so that if there's an emergency, you could run to one of them and... Uh, call the visitor center for like help and this is what they Eek. look like Eek. oh god this is a video oh yeah this is video mention. this video captures a live emergency alert broadcast from august of 2018 for Texas residents of the Eastern Permian Basin, these kinds of alerts and alarms are somewhat common. Though the tremors and ejecta of these small events are quite minimal when compared to the larger 2007 event, they are still a point of danger and are taken seriously by those who live and work around the Permian Basin superorganism. Oh my god. What is an ejecta? Vomit. It gross. The following message is transmitted at the request of the Texas Department of Public Safety, the United States Geological Survey, and the Permian Basin Recovery Corporation. The United States Geological Survey has issued a geobiological activity advisory for the following counties Cook County, Gumption County, Howard County, Midland County, Sterling County, and Hope. 218 AM. Central daylight oh God! Time at 10:48 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Seismic EKG monitoring stations detected muscle contractions originating from the northeastern limb of the Permian Basin superorganism. This event is expected to cause moderate to severe damage to property, utility services, and infrastructure. Residents are advised to seek shelter immediately. If you do not act, this will be a Holy crap! ...and battery-powered radio. During this event, you may experience headaches, nausea, fever, hallucinations, dizziness, mild seizures, temporary changes in vision, reduced or enhanced cognitive ability, limited precognition, memory loss, and muscle cramps. These effects are temporary and will stop once the event has concluded. Do not have to be I like how much this thing is shaking. That's terrifying. That was fucked up. I hated that. I mean, I loved that, but I hated that. I could barely hear it, and I'm okay with it. <laughs> oh, here we go. Taste the Coke sensation. Oh, no. Yeah. So Coke Heartthrob was first introduced on Valentine's Day in 1985 as a limited promotion, but sold so well over the summer that Coca-Cola added it to their primary beverage roster in 1986. The defining ingredient in Coke Heartthrob was, of course, amniotic ballast, harvested from special glands deep within the mystery flesh pit. The potential aphrodisiacal properties of amniotic ballast were diminished by heavily diluting the chemical before adding it to the beverage but coke heartthrob still developed a notorious reputation for its unusual intoxicating effects the taste of coke heartthrob was described as syrupy sweet with hints of amaretto and rose water and the beverage had a light pheromonal scent similar to perfume a combination of increased 
of increasing extraction costs after the 2007 tragedy as well as changing cultural attitudes ultimately saw the decline of Coke heartthrob sales until the Coca-Cola company decided to discontinue the beverage in 2011. Have a good night, Craig. Good night. Oh. Well, damn. <laughs> Roll the medicine side effect commercial. Yeah, it was like you would experience all these different things. Yeah. All right, I think I got one more in me. Let's make one it a good one. Me. Okay, yeah. let me find. Let me find the one. We can also revisit this later if we want to as well. Yeah, I suppose. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind coming back and and commentating more of this because this has been really fun. But whatever you think is a good one to whatever you think is a good one to end on for now. Honestly, I have no idea where the incident report is. Mm. And it's not this one that says wildlife incident report. That's not it. I don't think it is anyway. I'd imagine that's an, an incident report with one of the tiny, tiny creatures. Yeah, probably. Oh, you know what? Mm. This right here is the multi-tool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Do you want to read it? Sure. Yeah, hang on. Let me find it. All right. Uh, where's the picture? Yeah, you know what? We will revisit this at a different time, at another time, because there is there is a lot to go through here. Yeah. Oh, here it is. All right. If the Winchester repeating rifle was the gun that won the West, then the laser scope, anatomical survey, anatomical environment multi-tool certainly occupied a similar position within the history of the mystery flesh pit. Though it was preceded by a myriad of, t of similar prototype tools developed by early explorers of the pit, Laser Scope's 1978 introduction of the AEM was revolutionary in efforts and map efforts to map and understand the interior of the Permian Basin superorganism. Laser Scope, primarily a supplier of medical devices, was contracted by Anodyne, the prime uh, the prime contractor involved with the mystery mystery fledge piss development to design a portable multi-tool which would enable engineers and surveyors to quickly and easily cut paths through the dense viscera of the superorganism's inner anatomy. That is the grossest shit. The <laughs> AEM remains, the most, remains a robust example of Cold War era engineering with many examples surviving to this day. A highly corrosion resistant alloy casing protected the delicate laser internals while replaceable lithium batteries kept the kept the rifle relatively lightweight. It's literally a laser rifle. They said it. They yep. admitted it is a weapon. Let's yeah. see. Um, an electro an electric impact driver on the front of the tool was intended for a quick erection of stent frames to prop open small lumens. While an industrial grade CO2 laser and cauterize. Wait, what? And cauterize. Huh? Hang on. Oh, cauterize it at once. Told Cut you. And cauterized at once to create a clean incision through flesh. Okay, yeah, you were right on the money with that. Though not intended for anything more than an industrial tool, the AEM was frequently employed as a defensive weapon against aggressive wildlife within the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park, being capable of quickly cutting through even the densest carapaces of intra pit life forms. Many AEMs have found their ways to museums and private arms collections, though most of the tools are still being used oh, excuse me, by the Permian Basin Superorganism Containment Corporation, which continues to perform limited operations within the Mystery Flesh Pit. Oh my god, bruh, every single time. This fucking face, every single time. Yes. That is going to get me every yeah. time. <laughs> Dude, Sid Hamel, why? That, that's going to get me every time. All right. Well, there is a lot more that we can go yes. through. Because hallelujah, holy shit. Yeah. I think go. before Halloween. <laughs> Whoops, I've closed out I the think, website. 
before Halloween, definitely we should take another night and dive into this some more because Absolutely. we made a huge dent in it tonight. I think we can get through it with one more night of, of stuff. I agree. And we there can is, actually start at a reasonable time. There is a lot of this to yeah, go this through. Yeah, this is very dense. It's really cool, though. You can you see now why I like the like yes. I like this yeah. ARG so much. It's very mm-hmm. well written. It's in depth. Yeah, very much so. Like I can I can imagine like uh, this is the same point that um, Wendagoon, the uh, the YouTuber that I first heard about this from, uh, he brought up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could easily see a survival horror game made out of this. Oh yeah. Like, you have to go in and recover bits and pieces from the Mystery Flesh Pit. You're a contract worker. And mm-hmm. uh, just go down into the horror. You encounter the macro-organisms. You encounter amalgamations the occult of the things. people. The occult <laughs> activity. Yeah. And uh, and there's even save points. Like those lighthouses, those blue phone boxes. Boom. Oh, it's yeah. already there. There you go. That's actually really fucking good. Yeah, and you have, like, a survival pack and a tent. Yeah. It's already built. Like, I want to see some form of media made from this, because it's it's too good to pass up. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. It's so well written. (laughs) But that... Yeah, it's super well put together. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, I have to say, like, this stream did shockingly well uh we pretty much stayed at around like five viewers the entire time which is really cool hey there you go fantastic all right well thank you so much for watching um pat have you any final things to say oh tell talk about Um, the thing you're about to do the uh the stream oh uh so on sunday um normally i stream on sundays and tuesdays but due to a scheduling conflict um mainly just work um i cannot stream sunday this coming week so we are going to be are you admiring that chris are you having fun admiring that crystal yes um we are going to be streaming for a huge <laughs> oh, chunk of time i actually on sunday. licked it um oh no i just saw that um so we're going to be doing a huge thing on sunday instead instead of doing just the normal normal like two to four hours we're gonna go for a significant amount of time uh, the intention right now is to play Metroid Dread. And oh, uh, Crystal said you can't stream Tuesday. You will be streaming Sunday. That's what I said. You said that backwards. Did I? Oh. Yeah. He's anyway. no, he's not streaming Tuesday. He's streaming Sunday. This We're Sunday. streaming Sunday. This coming Sunday for a relatively <laughs> large amount of time. Um, we're going to be playing Metroid Dread and Resident Evil, hopefully finishing Resident Evil at some point in some form, in some way, maybe eventually before Halloween. Um, yeah, but we're most likely because it's going to be still relatively new and I'm very, very excited. Um, we're going to probably do more. Uh, we're going to start with Metroid Dread and see how that goes. Hell yeah. I am so excited. excited for that. Tomorrow uh, I work from like two to eight and i'm gonna be able to immediately pick up my copy i'm very excited same but thank you so much for watching this is jacob of retro tech signing off have yourselves a fantastic night and take care crystal redeemed an egg look at that (laughs) she redeemed one egg Oh, good night, everyone. Oh, Make sure God. to remember to uh, leave your offerings for the Mystery Flesh Pit, um, or else it will be angry and uh, eat the planet. Imagine if the Mystery Flesh Pit laid eggs. Ugh, gross. Would you eat Mystery Flesh Pit eggs? No, no, not at all. Why not? Because we don't know what it is. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> Ew, no, no. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, I get yes. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, we don't know what it actually is. Like No, if we knew it was an animal of some kind or like indeed, you know, like I joked about earlier, like it's the planet's butthole. Like if we knew what it was, I mean 
maybe, but not as it is currently. We have no no idea what the thing even is. Yeah. This um, sounds like a very swift way to get poisoned. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope all of you enjoyed the stream. I hope you liked uh, mm, that yeah, Halloween -y transition and all of that. Yeah, I, I dig it. The color mm -hmm. change is good. Mm -hmm. It's real nice. All right, I will catch you when I catch you next time. I don't know when that'll be, <laughs> but by golly, it'll happen. <laughs> it will indeed happen. All right, goodbye. Good night, everybody.